Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I'm just refilling the purple. Gonna work on a Jimi Hendrix, so you gotta have purple. <laughs> you gotta make sure we got plenty. Man, it's been a nutty week. I hope everybody's had a good week. Um, I'm looking forward to tonight. We're gonna talk about music, music-inspired paintings, and I'd love to hear what, what you have to say about that. If there's any music that inspires you for art or makes you think about a painting or... Um, any, well, uh, trying to talk and do this at the same time. I'm about, about to get purple everywhere, all over my face and everything. So far, I'm doing a pretty good job and not getting it everywhere. Oh, my goodness. Okay. I'm going to put that up because I'm about to, it's about to explode everywhere. Purple. Okay. So, John, we got, we got some watchers. Oh, yay. Sue has joined us. Oh, hey, Sue. It's good, it's good to have you back. Uh, uh, Valerie. Um, Kim Sim. Seven has joined us. They're on the live chat chatting back and forth. So hello. Well, hi guys. Hey, thanks so much for joining us on this Friday. Well, man, I, I'm looking so forward to get working on this painting. Well, there's um it's a painting of Jimi Hendrix. And as you can see, I've already done quite a bit. It's already been sketched out. And he's painted a little bit, although the colors that are on his face, it's a um it's an underpainting really. So I'm gonna work on that more, but Really what I wanted to talk about tonight, though, was the um, the music in the painting. And that's that's going to be in the background. Um, I, I have syn synesthesia. And that, that's just really, it's a big word that just means that one sense is also doing the work of another sense. So whenever I hear music, I see color. And it's always done that. But I've noticed it more um, since I lost my eyesight. And I've talked to other visually impaired people that have said the same thing, that, that whenever they... Um, uh, lost their eyesight if they had the synesthesia they started no noticing that color was brighter to them and I guess that makes sense really because the color coming in from the music it isn't having to compete anymore with the you know the, the color from light and uh, the different objects and things like that so it makes sense and there was one friend of mine well I actually a couple of people but one friend of mine that, that are musicians that are visually impaired and they have the same type of synesthesia and they said that whenever they lost their eyesight, the colors exploded. And that's one reason why they play music, because the music they play, they see color. So, you know, it's a way to really I mean, engulf themselves in the color, which I think is pretty cool. Well, I'm, I'm curious, John, because I, I don't not, I don't have this in the future, So I'm curious what, when you say you see it, I mean, assuming you're a sighted person, mm -hmm. when you say you see it, does it take over other colors? Does it blow out the other colors? What what is, what is exactly is going on there? I don't quite understand. You know, you know that's that's a really good question. And I know whenever I was sighted, like it was more it was more like like a feeling, like like you see the color, but it's not, but it's it's more like um, um, you know, like like if you if you're reading some some some, some poetry, you would say, oh oh, it's it's purple prose or something. I mean, it's more of a, a feeling of purple and it's a color of purple like I see purple but yeah. but it's a, it's more of like an overall like color of purple hmm. you know that sort of like fills your mind almost like um, almost like a mist although you're still seeing what you're seeing can you ignore it you can well that's, that's one thing I always I thought everybody saw it you know growing up I thought you know and that's why you you hear things like purple prose or things like that you know or, or music and you hear about a lot of musicians actually have that, and they'll and they'll talk about a blue note or this or that, and you know, and, and I think yeah, it makes sense, you know, of course, you know, it's a blue note or whatever. And then, um, so I thought everybody did, but you know, but it's funny, but I, I think our senses, we we think what we sense, what what we perceive, is what other people perceive too about everything, you know. And there there was actually um, this really really smart guy, and his name his name is Aubers. He, he's a color theoretician or. I mean, he has a better name. It's a, it's a better title than that, but I can't yeah. think. But um, but he talks about color theory, and he actually did a test once where he took a Coca-Cola sign, which is just red and white. You know, if you're going to get a logo, that's about as simple as you can get. It's two colors. One of them's white. So he took the red, like red, red paint chips, and put them all out on a table, and um, so it was hundreds of paint chips, and one of them matched the red of the Coca-Cola sign. And he would ask people, you know, like, hey, can you can you go and and find the red paint chip that matches that and everybody of course thinks well of course i can you know that it's yeah. right there even the, co the coke sign's right there so you can hold it up and look at it and whatever you want the funny thing is is that most people pick a different paint ch chip and one one person would pick one that's much darker than the actual and somebody would pick a much lighter 
and they would swear, you know, the, you know, the, the hand, hand of the Lord that it was a right thing chip. Yeah. And for them, it was. They were looking at it, but their way of perce perceiving from one person to another, they, you know, it just it's interesting. Like our perceptions of the minute sort of things in life. So, for me, color also. I mean, music also had color. It's always been synonymous with one another. Well, but, I know you've done paintings in the past, but like you'll paint a song to the note. So every particular, every C note is whatever color. Does yeah. it, is it like, I mean, will that color fluctuate or will it every time you hear that, that C note, no matter what song, is it always blue or always? You know, that, that's a good question. Oh, you know, and, uh, about your other question about, you know, does it take, what does it look like? Mm -hmm. It's almost, if you think about it, if you're looking at something, if you're sighted and you're looking at something and you're hearing music and the color's coming, it's almost like looking at, or hearing two, two different songs at the same time. So you may be listening, or you may be listening to something on your laptop is talking to you or whatever, and then you're in a cafe and they're playing some background music. That's weird. So, so, there's, <laughs> so you're hearing two different things, okay. and one's not distracting you from the other, you know? So like the synesthesia, the, the colors coming in from that is more like that, that background music. Okay. Where, you know, you have the purple and all, but it's not interfering with the colors that you're seeing. But of course, when the eyesight gone, that background noise really, you know, it amps up, you know, and it becomes, you focus on it a lot more, you know, I mean, if, you know, if you were, you know, if you, if that's all you can hear, that's all you can see, then that's okay, what you're cool. doing. So anyway, Interesting. And what was the other question? Because <laughs> it was really good. Uh, if, the, if, the, if like the same note always oh, had the same yeah. color to it. It does for the most part. Like one of the things about um, Jimi Hendrix, um, he plays a lot of simple chords, like, like two of the songs I really like, um, um, Voodoo Child is, is, is one of them, and um, um, gosh, what was the other one? It's like it's not all like um, Purple Haze is a really good one, but a lot of them they have like kind of like Voodoo, Voodoo Child for instance. Yeah, it really has like like three different main chords in it. You know, it's E, G, and A, and those have the same kind of colors. Now, but if you were to play that like on as you know, like if you were to play like E E E G G G, and, and I know I'm not getting the, the tones right, I can't sing to save my life. <laughs> but if you were to play that, like it would be very simple. But the way like Jimmy or an artist like that, that's incredible. He he can pull all these different shapes and colors out of that, which is just incredible and amazing. You know, where if I were to pick up the guitar and try to play Voodoo Child or something, it would be very much like ding 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 ding. You know, it would just be very simple little <laughs> yeah. colors. The way he does it, it's you know, it's dramatic and it's different. And one of the cool things too is that it isn't always the same. And and other other influencers can change the color. And of course, you know that makes sense. So like, if you were to go to a live show, and let's let's, let's say there's a jazz trio, mm -hmm. and let's say they, they play the same venue every every Tuesday, you know, and 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 you go there um, one Tuesday and you hear them, yeah. And you go back another Tuesday and they're playing the same set. And it's the same people. But it's a different night and it's a different crowd and the colors are going to be similar but they're also going to be very different so i mean so the same notes are being played but they're playing being played in a different way the crowd the noise they're making or the noise they're not making is going to influence the overall experience so one thing that i do in my painting is that i paint it in many different ways <laughs> it's the one thing i do so like I, I can do a music painting where i'll do it a note for note re representation and that's really interesting and that's fun so if i do a particular song it could be a recording of a song, and I just want to get that song down. Most of the time, though, what I want is more the experience of that song. How does that song make you feel? And so I want to use the notes from the song, because that's the colors that I'm seeing. But I don't necessarily want it the exact way that the artist is doing it. Like with a Jimi Hendrix, it'd be very hard to get it. And I've done some, some Jimi paintings, and um, it's interesting. Like, like Jimi, like his background is a lot of blues. He does these different things. And the cool thing about that is that he he has this free spirit with the with the with the music, so he doesn't necessarily play it the exact same way every time. He'll he'll bend it and he'll make it different. And he'll add some stuff and he, he takes in what the crowd is doing, and he'll you know he has enough um, just this incredible talent where he can take it and bend it to to whatever to match that space yeah. and that vibe. So doing a, a painting of something like that is a lot of fun because you 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 can do the same thing. And I wish that we could play the music here tonight. Like yeah. I wish you know what I'm saying about had headphones. And I'm, but I thought well that kind of sucks because I'll be jamming out. And everybody else is like, uh, hmm. and it's yeah. no you know it's 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 we, we, the most ridiculous thing in the world to see somebody with headphones jumping up and down. We could coordinate with everybody to play the song right at the same time. I wondered and, about and that. Hit the play button at the same. Time. But then people that tune in in mid thing would think we were all crazy. We'd have to have a scroll saying you know <laughs> tune into this radio like you 
you know, like if, there, that would be cool. like if there's an internet r radio station, yeah, it was really cool, then we could all tune in if it's playing. Yeah. Okay, one question of the day, guys. <laughs> does an internet radio station does it play the same song forever? I mean, like, like if you tune in, like we could find a station so that if you tuned in right now, it would be playing a song. But if somebody else tuned in like twenty minutes from now, they would. Would it restart? You know, would, would they be in the same spot? Like it'd be great. Like it'd be nice if everybody's yeah. hearing the same thing at the same time. I've wondered that too, because I'll tune into, you know, Jack FM or something, and it's di and it just feels like it's different. Yeah, two seconds later, if I close my browser and tune in again or something. It's, you know, there's it's also weird. the lag. It's like there's like yeah. a thirty second lag or something. So everything we say is like you know, because YouTube has to process it in the encoder and all that. Yeah. So when I'm going like, ah, you know, you're like, oh, what is he doing? Like, oh, there I am. <laughs> you're like, oh, I see what he's doing. That's a cool spot. Yeah, but so it's always that little, yeah. That's funny. Still, though, you know, um, I've heard of those parties, though, where they're like iPod parties or something where. Oh, where they're all wearing headphones? Yeah, everybody in the party is wearing a headphone. That's if you're, like, really paranoid about the cops getting called. Yeah, really. Well, we should be. Uh, but, um, yes, yeah, so everybody wears headphones, and you all tune into the same thing. So everybody's, like, bouncing at the same thing. We're gonna see how they do those, cause yeah. you know maybe we could do the same thing. We'll, well just do yeah, it. Yeah, I'm sure. Everybody big... could play. It. I don't know. That would be cool. What would you know? The, doing that made me think. What would make a cool art series is if you had um, a particular bot, maybe like a particular bottle of wine, and um, almost Andy Warhol style, just painted a series of that particular bottle of wine, but purposely put yourself in different situations, like mm -hmm. drink that bottle of wine you know, in a jazz bar with a particular cigar or something. Oh, yeah. And then drink that bottle of wine, like, with pizza, hanging out, you know, watching a kid movie. Yeah, <laughs> wouldn't that be Paint cool? that bottle, you know, and it would just be a series of, you know, what what is this bottle of wine really like when you're in all yeah. those different scenarios? That'd be cool. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. I like, I like, I like how your idea centers around. Well, wine? Yeah, <laughs> both of them. We could drink that bottle of wine here. We could take another bottle of wine and we drink it here. And then we'll need another bottle of wine. Well, when you were talking about colors, I was like, well, when I drink wine, I think of purple, but that's probably just because oh. it's purple all the time. Oh, oh, but it's not, though. It has all these different subtleties. And, and, yeah. and yeah. But you know, um, which, I, which I know you, you, you really, I mean, you love wine and you're, you're, you know much more about wine than I do and you appreciate it more. You know, I was just thinking though. Um, we're, we're doing we're doing a um, we're we're doing a show with a winery. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You should tell everybody about that. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Could you could you look up the info? Yeah, yeah. I'll like post that. it to the chat. Okay, cool. Yeah, that'd be great because we're, we're we're actually doing, um, artiste. Yeah, I mean um, your information's not up on their site yet, but I'll give the website and then so they know the co the company that you're working with. Yeah. What is the name of the the, the company? Because only because I cause I've been talking to Bion so much it's that Artiste Winery. That's what I thought. Artiste, Artiste Wine wi wi Winery, but um I've been talking to Bion, who is the guy that he you know it's his company and so I think of it as Bion's Wine, <laughs> not Bion's Wine, but it's this um it, it's this wi winery in San Santa Barbara and it's so cool that you mentioned that because um they're really different like they 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 look at a person's artwork they they have artists come in and. And we're going to do two or three different wines for them, but but they look at the artwork like, like wine labels. Wine labels, but here, here's here's the thing that Bayan does that is so cool in this winery. Um, most most of the time they'll, they'll they'll have a wine and then and then they'll try to match a label to the wine. You know, like they'll go out and look for art and they'll think, oh, this looks cool. It'll sell wine. What, what what they do that's different is that they look at the artwork. So so they take the artwork and then and then they they they, they craft a, a wine to match the art. I think, I think that's pretty neat. So they're starting from a completely different place than most people do, whenever whenever they're 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 blending their wines and they're they're building their wines. And so they're actually starting from a point of art, and then putting that into a wine sort of form. So, and, and that's that's going to be brilliant. I can't wait. And um and the reason I was thinking what the, what, what what made me think of that. Not, not only are they awesome and it's really cool, and I can't wait to see how this happens. But um but we should be getting lots of wine. So <laughs> so we'll have plenty oh, of bottles. <laughs> We'll have yeah. plenty of bottles of wine. We're like, well, we're going to drink our wine here. We're going to drink our yeah. wine there. Well, well. So I cheers, will, guys. I will, <laughs> I will have to admit, when John had an event out there, I, what, I don't know, a month and a half ago, and we and partnering with this event, they were putting his painting on one of the wines that was featured at this reception, and they were, um, you know, they were doing, you could, they were selling cases of this wine. You had to order it, obviously. And um, you know, I <laughs> the minute the minute we get there, I'm like, 
I, you know, I'm, I'm in awe because it's like, oh my gosh, a painting is on a wine bottle. So I, you know, <laughs> I didn't even talk to John about it. I went and bought an ungodly amount of, of cases of wine. Oh. It was like, oh, by the way, babe. <laughs> We're going to get a lot of wine. But, you know, I, I've learned, you know, I've, I've known you, what, thir 13 years now? 14, something like that? Is, yeah. I know if it comes to wine or Star Trek, that, you know, I'm not surprised if you, if you buy anything. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, investing. I mean, yeah. Investment. You know. It's all in good fun. <laughs> um, that's, it'll, it'll, it'll be, it'll be really interesting, though, to see what they come up with. And, 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 and really, the, the reason is, is because they are so good at what they do. I mean, they, they treat it as art. And, so it's just it's really cool. So I'm really curious what what they're gonna do with that, and because the wine at that event was so good, it was really good. I don't know. You know, it's just it's interesting whenever you meet people, you're traveling and you meet people and you see something that somebody's doing that's really cool, really interesting, you know, and then and then and then they want you to be a part of it, and you're like, well, heck yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were, and, and the idea with what buying what was really cool about this is, I mean, a lot of what we do is attached to a charity, and so buying was. You know, wanting to partner with us and, and try to get a, a charity involved and all that sort of stuff. But he thought it was part of his thing was that, it, you know, wine is a lot about these sort of blind tastings that, that people do. And so the whole concept of a blind artist and, and, you know, these perceptions of what you assume is something like you assume an expensive wine is, you know, tastes good when in fact it might not. And so he was really fascinated by the idea of. You know, kind of hosting a blind artist to reinforce this idea of really going with the senses to, you know, incorporate like all the different flavors and yeah. that were going into how he was doing his wine. So it was really, it was pretty cool. I, I, I dug the concept. So yeah, and it's you know it's weird and it, it's it's funny. Um, I don't know. It's just it's just interesting to me because when when I whenever I taste flavors, I also see color, and and I think that's a big part of the music. Like. Um, I mean, I've had that all my life, and, and it was always um, drowned out by the color I was seeing. So whenever I lost my eyesight, that sort of came more to the forefront. But through painting, I think, and then knowing that music is also color, or experiencing that, it that way. So for me, it always was. Um, it made it where, 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 where my other senses incorporated color as well, I think. And I mean, I started picking up on it more. Like, for me, um, salty is red it's just red it always you know it's just it always has been it's just salty's red and um milk is blue you know like a creamy is blue and i know milk's not blue and growing up i mean i always thought of you know like like i would color like i would i would do like white for milk but then i would put a blue in it too like in places because that's the way it, it tasted with blue um sugar is yellow and depending on the sweetness that's that's how yellow it is how much i know sugar is white <laughs> but it's really yellow, I'm telling you. <laughs> so, I mean, you know. Um, so what are you doing now? Well, I'm mixing some paints. I'm, I'm putting some mediums and stuff in this paint. And um, and pretty soon we're going to do a technique of the week. Oh, yeah, and I also want to say, um, chat. If anybody's on the website and they're listening to this and they're like, oh, I really want to say something, go um, click click on the bottom right-hand part where there's the, the YouTube thing, uh, the little YouTube icon. And that'll take you to the our YouTube channel um, because chat's only available on on the YouTube channel. Like it's it doesn't have a plug in or anything for the website. Unfortunately, you can watch it there, but 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 you can't chime in or anything. And Valerie, you want to try, oh yes, Valerie to, chimed in and said if if she had a wine her with her art paired with her art, it would be very woodsy. Ooh, woodsy. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. She does the woodworking. So. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> that's cool. Right, see, that's some earthy flavors. That would be nice. Yeah. Well, hey, Valerie, if you ever want to, um, it'd be cool. Like, if you ever want to share your work with, with us, you know, on, on here and or, pri or pri pri privately, but it'd be really cool to share it with everybody. You know, if you ever want to send us some photos or something, it'd be really cool to, to be able to, to put that up because... I mean, I'll talk about my art all day long. I mean, I'm, not, I'm not shy about that. My 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 art, my art, my art. But I would, man, I think it'd be so cool though, because I know there's quite a few people on here that um, that do art, and, and Valerie, it'd be really cool to see yours too. You know, put that on here and see what, yeah. see what, see what, see what we're up to. So right now, I'm just mixing some colors. Um, the thing about um, Jimmy, like his, um, you know, he uses those three basic chords. And to me, like the, the E is very orangey, you know, and, and the G is more of a kind of a yellowish green. 
And depending on how it's played, it could be more yellow or more green or really green, depending on how it's played. Um, and then, and then also, also, um, just a green note. So it's interesting how he does that though, because like the way that I, I see these colors, they're all combined, but he actually uses them where they, you know, even on a color wheel, they, they work together. Like they morph from one to the other and he goes back and forth and back and forth in that and goes into it and bends them and twists them. And, um, in my mind, so it twists all these colors. But what I also want to do is use some other colors because I don't want to just stick to that because the way that he plays it, the way that he works it, the way he uses the pedals, and of course the rest of the band that the, the he arranges, you know, the, the the drummers, the other, you know, everything that's going on adds in this other color. So I don't want to just focus on what's going on, like the basic rhythm of it, because you know you'd, you'd miss out on so much. So so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to put some color down. It's going to get a little zany, um, but I'll give it a try. Now now the background in this is done in a lemon yellow. And that's and that's basically because I wanted to do some purple on his face. I wanted the purple to pop, but also because the bass note that he uses is kind of yellow in the, in this song, the Voodoo Child. And I'm not necessarily doing just Voodoo Child, but it's a good way to start. I don't know, so I'm going to start up here. And I'll talk a little bit about a paint knife too. So what I'm putting in is just basic color. Now, is it too soon to do a technique of the week? Um, uh, uh, a little too soon? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, in a, in a bit, I'll do a technique of the week. So I want to, I want to explain what I'm doing with the paint knife. So, so in a minute, we'll, we'll talk about techniques, which is about mediums and stuff, because I basically, I change the way these different paints feel. And so, so not only, I put down a little orange, let me, let me find my red. Um, um, because I change the way each of these colors feel so that, even, even on a paint knife, I can tell which color is which. And when they get about halfway dry, you can still feel them and tell. Like, that's more glossy, it's more matte, that's more... This has less viscosity, that has more viscosity. Now, this isn't the way I started painting, but I've been doing it for like 15 years, and I've gotten better at being able to tell different things. So at first, I, I had to paint with one color, and that was it. And then I learned how to blend that color a little bit. And then how to, how to make shading, shadows from that color. And then finally... How to have two colors on one paint knife that I could put, or three colors on a paint knife, and put that down. So it's very much like baby steps, baby steps, baby steps, until now I can have three, four different colors on a paint knife and put it down, and I may not be able to feel it right then. Of course, I mean, I've worked with a paint knife enough where you have a pretty good idea what, what it's doing, and you can feel it. Paint knife is a lot like a um, cane. You know, it's very rigid, and you can feel it as it goes on the, on the canvas. So I don't know if you can hear that, you know, when it's dry here when it's wet, you can feel it as well. So then I can go back using these different mediums. Um, the paints feel different even when they're about a little bit dry. So I can go back and feel it. And I can think, oh, I got a lot of red in this and the red streaking here, a little bit of orange, a little bit of yellow. Basically letting my hands do what a sighted artist would let their eyes do. And I know I'm glossing over that really quick. So if anybody's tuning in for the first time, um, Please feel free to ask anything. I work with kids a lot. They ask everything like, Mr. John, how do you go to the bathroom? How do you do this or that? So to me, I paint every day. I'm a painter. I don't, I don't really think about having to explain how I handle the art and the, the colors, how I, I do all that. Um, but if you're new, please don't hesitate to ask that. I just don't explain it all the time because, you know, I, you know, I, I, I paint every day. So, you know, um, I don't think about explaining it until, until I need to. But if you want me to, I have no problem <laughs> answering any questions. So, John, how do you decide what, you know, if you're depicting a, a note or a song, where, why, why do you choose where to put it on the canvas that you do? That's, you know, that's a really good question. And um, it depends on the kind of music painting that I'm doing. So if it's a the, you're feeling, the expression of the, mu the music, where it's more of a feeling of it, then... I have more freedom of it, you know, because I'm trying to put on the canvas, trying to arrange the colors and the shapes so that it matches that feeling. If it's a note for note, then it's a much more analytical sort of frame of mind where you're going in and you're trying to match everything. Like I, 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 I did, I did a, um, an old blues song where I went in and I matched like every drum beat, boom, 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 
boom, every guitar, everything that happened in the song, mapped it all out in paint. Then I went in and I did a Buddy Holly song. It's like an early rock and roll song where it has that heavy blues influence, but then it's twisted a little bit. And I've always heard that rock and roll comes from the blues, but I never really understood it until I tried to paint both of them. And you could actually see the blues in that rock and roll. You know, and then you could see the little twisties, the little twisty twisties that they did, the little, <laughs> little changes, you know, the mix-ups that was different. But all through it, though, it had that blues core going through it. And, uh, you know, so it made it made the music where it was visible. So something like that, you know, it's more analytical. Um, this this is going to be more of just feeling of the way that. Um, Have you ever thought about uh, painting Dave Matthews band? Man, I would love to do Dave, Dave Matthews. I, I um, you know, it's funny with, with with Dave Matthews. I I go I go through spurts because I'll, I'll listen to them so much. That you know that I'll get you know a little burnt out or maybe not burnt out, but I, I, it'll. They have so many influences of their own, so I'm not really burnt out. But it's just that that band takes in so many influences, like from New Orleans and blues and all, all these different places that you listen to them, and then you you go back and you start listening to other things that influenced them, and then you get off on a thing. So, um, I think I think I think that'd be really cool. But I, I got to be honest, man, it would be it'd be so cool to actually meet him and. Do, do a painting that were from a live setting. That would be cool. Well, and he's like, he's one of those artists that will change it up. I mean, they jam. I've been yeah. to like four or five of those con concerts. Wow, yeah. And, um, I mean, yeah, everyone, I mean, it's the same songs, but, you know, one song will last 14 minutes, so if you're into that, it's awesome. Yeah, man. But they'll jam out, and yeah, it's cool. Which, which, which I think is great. I, I was thinking the other day, I was listening to, I forget what band, it was on Spotify, and I thought, you know, I really like this song, but, you know, it's only like, like a three-minute song, and I, I wouldn't want to go to a concert for the, that three minutes, and... I thought, man, it's a shame. It's a shame they're not more of a jam band. Kind of like, like the Deadheads or Dave Matthews or. Well, um, so on the chat, um, Owen just said he sold a painting. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I read about that. Owen of the Turtles. Yeah, it's awesome. Congratulations, man. Um, that is cool. Uh, Rebecca Hogan um, asked, um, "What has been your favorite painting to complete?" Um. You know, my my favorite painting is always the one that that that, that I'm working on, really, and um, that's a really good question. I'm sorry I don't have a better answer, but um, every painting that I do, I try to do something a little bit different. So there's always a challenge. So there, you know, so there's a challenging aspect. Like you know, so there's always a point in the middle of the painting where I'm thinking, like, oh, I don't know if it's going to come together, um, which is a good place to be. You know, it's good to be right on that tipping point of disaster. Because you know, at least you're pushing the boundaries a little, but but it makes it where every painting that I do, that's the one I'm most interested in, you know. And then, and about my paintings, I, I guess because I love to write, um, I think about paintings as communication, as expression. So I see it as a message, as a story, as, as something that you're putting out there, and um, and I don't really feel like like the story's been understood or or really um, put out there until until someone's heard it. So I don't know, like, like whenever I do a painting, I, you know, it, you know, it's for me. It's, I mean, I don't, I don't want to sound like, you know, oh, it's for me, 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 but it is for me. I mean, I, I paint the way I paint because that's the way I need to and the way it feels right. And whenever somebody connects to that, I feel like, you know, we, we, you know, they got that message. Like, and it's, it's interesting though. I never really thought anybody would see a painting of mine. And yet whenever, and now people do, and whenever somebody sees something and they connect with it, um, I'm not, I'm not sure how to explain it, but it's weird. Like, I put so much of myself into my artwork. Whenever somebody connects with it, it's like, it's like you, you know, me and that person, we, we connect as well on a level. Like, I've never met anybody that liked my art that, like, you know, we weren't hanging out. It wasn't like that awkward sort of thing, like, where, you know, like, well, I don't really know you. You're a stranger or whatever. It's more like, hey, how are you doing? You're like, I don't know we connect. You know, there's a there's well, clicks. I, I, think, I think that has a lot to do with how universal, I mean, we've talked about this, how universal art is as a language. I mean, it's. Yeah. I mean, you can kind of bypass the small talk because you have art or the, the language barrier or whatever. I mean, that you know, somebody across the, the world can see a painting and feel the same way about 
you know, something and get the same emotion and the same kind of, it's a, it's, I think it's a form of communication. And it means, yeah. I mean, I, I might get, you know, some, a bad rap for this, but I think art on some level is pretty selfish. <laughs> I mean, it's about the process. So it's about like you doing it. And I mean, I'm an artist as well. So, uh, you know, I understand that why you, nobody would do anything they didn't want to do that fulfilled them. So on some yeah. level, you're trying to communicate whether or not that, that message is received you know, is another yeah. story, but yeah, I think that's, you know, and that's probably why it's so easy to, like, communicate with fellow, fellow artists, is because you kind of understand that language, I guess. Yeah, yeah, and it, I guess, I guess I met you as selfish, because, like, even with commissions and stuff, like, I, I always have, have structured commissions so that, and, and I, I know I mentioned this before, of, um, which is different than any other artist I know, where I, I don't want any payment, like, I, I've argued with people, because they'll say, well, you know, surely you want some payment down, because they want to lock in that, that thing. I'm like, no, I don't take any payment until the painting is completely done because I, I, I want the freedom. Like, you know, it's my painting up until then. And, you know, but I love doing commissions because I get to talk to people and hear their ideas, what they're interested in. An entire lifetime of experiences, of interest that they have. And I get to delve into that. And I love that. That's so wonderful. But then whenever I go to the canvas and I paint, you know, it's it's my understanding, it's my experiences that I'm trying to put on there. And um, and I'm, you know, in my connection with that. And, you know, and I, th I think really to be a true painting, you know, you've got to be a little s selfish about it or, or it's not going to be a true painting. You know, it's going to be, you know, it's just, you know, it's going to be what you think somebody else might think that they think they like. And it just gets watered down and I don't know. If anybody feels differently, let me know. I'm really curious because I don't feel like I'm right about that. I, I mean, I feel like that's that's the way I think and that's the way I do it. And I feel like for other people, they probably have a different way of doing it that works just as well for them. And I'm really curious about that, you know, because art art is so different. You know, I mean, it's just... But it's interesting, too, about how, 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 Jackie, how you were saying how it crosses, how it's, it's timeless. Yeah. Well, I mean, you've gotten, I mean, you've gotten some, some fascinating emails from all over the world. Like some guy from Ethiopia emailed you and was like, oh, I, and I mean, I didn't even think we had to, you know, translate it or something in Google, but yeah. was like, I knew exactly what you were trying to express and this, I feel yeah. the same way. And it was I remember like, that guy. <laughs> wild. <laughs> you know, we, it's like, we get tons only, of these emails. Only art can do that. And that's why it's so important, I guess. You know what's weird that why that I think sticks out too is that this this gentleman he's in he's in Ethiopia, he's in this place where they don't even really have roads, but somehow they have internet yeah. out there. Yeah. And um and he was looking at a photo of me with a painting in the background. Oh, that's and right. And he was that's describing the painting that was just like a small little part yeah. of the of the other thing, and it was like he was standing behind me saying like, oh, you must have felt this and this, and uh, I really felt connected. And I'm like, yeah. oh, that's just yeah. That's you know, I remember thinking like, you're kind of looking behind me. I thought it was you know. What the world? Yeah, it's so crazy that you would be able to get that, and it's just, you yeah, know, it's pretty crazy. Or, or you go to a museum and and there's pots and things, and you know, it's funny, like like pottery now, like you, you, if there's a there's an old pot from Greece, back then it was worth nothing. It's what it's what they put their you know their stuff in. You know, it was it was it was, it was like the Tupperware of the day, really, for the most part. Um, depending on the pot and all, but I mean, there were some, of course, that was worth more, but for the most part. You know, it was just what they used, and, and um, that's why we find so much. But whenever you see an artistic license, like, to take it on some of these, like some, some of these potters for these basic sort of pots would spend so much time putting on this artwork and stuff on it. And it's interesting when you look at it now, and, you know, it doesn't matter that it was, it was 2,000 years ago or more. You know, you're, you're connected with that person, and and it's signed like a person signed this with their mark on it, and it's just yeah, it's incredible. It's just it's just incredible to me. Yeah, speaking of odd pot, odd um, pots and pottery and stuff like that. Totally off subject, but you know why not? We have time. Uh, um, I saw I saw an interesting Facebook post where they found some ancient um, uh, you know clay pots that were buried, you know, from centuries ago, mm -hmm. other civilizations or whatever, and they looked inside and they found seeds and they planted them and and they they were able to grow squash that has never existed before. Like, I mean, well, it well, went extinct. And it's huge. They're huge. Wow. <laughs> yeah, anyway, off topic, but that's, fascinating. That's, 
That's pretty you cool. You can Google it, and I'm sure it's out there somewhere. That's pretty cool. Well, I am from the South, so the first thing I'd want to do is fry it. You know, I don't, I don't want to take that giant squash and put it and make a nice little breaded batter. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Do it up right. Oh, yummy. Well, hey, Owen. Um, buddy, congratulations again on the on the painting. Um, you know, and if if you or if any other artists out there, if you want to share your artwork, um, you know, um, send send in a photo of it. Um, hey, well, Stacey Wyman chimed in and said uh, she was always told that touching paintings is bad because of the oil in your hands. Do you add something to the paints to keep them from degrading? Um, that no. <laughs> that is a really good um, question. I don't add anything to the paints. I do varnish them, and I use a really high quality varnish to to protect them. You know what? You want you know it, it, that's sort of a new concept. The idea of that it's not okay to touch art. Used to whenever museums first started, um, it would it would be it would have been considered rude to not let a patron handle like a vase or, or touch a painting or something if they wanted to, and I'd be like, sure, madam, yeah, of course, of course, you may touch the Picasso. Well, it wouldn't have been Picasso then before then, but um, um, but then but then then we found out that oils and stuff can can degrade paintings over time. Well, when you do your workshops at the Meadows, mm -hmm. what what do you guys? I know, I mean. What do you guys do when, because they let you guys touch some stuff. Um, yeah, we do. It, it, and it, it just depends. Like like in a museum, kind of like a really forward, forward thinking museum, like, like the Meadows in Dallas, um, they're, they'll let us touch quite a bit of stuff, but it has to be in their collection. So in every museum, there, there's a lot of things that are on loan. And the stuff that on loan, you know, it's like a contract. So there's all these stipulations and they have to protect it and all this. So stuff like that is really out of out of range, uh, you know, out of bounds because they, they don't own it. Stuff that is in their collection, it depends. So, so a lot of times we'll wear white gloves, and um, and one thing that we'll do if we're not able to touch the painting, we might be able to touch a, a sculpture that's in the same line. So so like at the Meadows, I believe we're, we were we were we were t we, we were looking at some Cubist paintings on like Picasso, and then I can't I can't remember all the painters we're looking at, but then. We couldn't touch those paintings there. They, the the metals didn't own them. So, what we did was, they also had some some Cubist sculpture that uh, we could put white clo uh, gloves on, and you could actually touch the sculpture that was done with the same ideas in mind as the painting. So, and that and that was really cool. So, so whenever we went back to the paintings, everybody had a new appreciation of it. They were and they were, they were looking at the painting. You could tell people were like, "Oh my goodness, yeah!" You know, it was it was this whole different experience because you got to get hands on. Um, but for my for my paintings though, um, I paint in acrylic, and acrylic's actually it's pretty durable. Um, um, you know, has UV protection in it, all this sort of stuff. But then I also put a high quality varnish on it, and the varnish is a really good idea. It protects from oils. Um, it it the kind I use, I believe, it also has a bit of a UV protectant, so it's going to keep the color from fading, and um, and it makes it easier to clean later too. So you can clean the painting. You can also, if the painting needs to be repaired, you can strip the varnish off. The paint is still perfect underneath, and you can re-varnish re it. So it makes it where a painting that might have lasted forever will really last forever. <laughs> will last forever in a day. Oops, I almost ran into a camera. Was that a good answer? You think? Yeah. Does that, does that yeah. answer the question? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What? When, when, well, mm -hmm. on that same line, you you felt a Rembrandt before, right? Yeah, yeah, Rembrandt, so Picasso. What was, uh, what was that like? Well, awesome. In, in Van Gogh, <laughs> it was really awesome, and um, especially um, my my favorite though is Monet in the in the in the Van Gogh, and I felt I felt the Picasso. Um, and the reason the Van Gogh is my favorite is because of the impasto paint, the really thick paint. So I mean, you could really follow. Um, what was the thinnest paint? Gosh, um. Picasso was pretty thin. Like he wasn't really thinking about texture at all. It was all about like just getting the lines down. Yeah. So that that was thin. But um, the Monet the Monet was a little interesting. You could feel it. But it you know it was. It's interesting with with oil paint, depending on how it, it how much medium or what medium you use or how you thin it down, because they're they're the way it's mixed. Sometimes you can feel every little bristle in the paint. Yeah. And that's really cool. And that's neat because you can feel. Because you can feel the bristles. You can feel 
not only where the handle of the brush was, so like it's like this this, this is a paint eraser, but but not, not only like the handle, like the, like what direction that the the hand, the arm must have been moving, but if the bristles are swirling this way or that, you can actually feel like what twisting motion. Hold, hold mm -hmm. it up to the the paint camera, the painting camera. Oh, this one. Yeah, yeah. That one. Yeah. A little closer to the camera. Oh, and this is just a, an eraser. So. Yeah, yeah, that's an interesting tool. Oh, and if you've never seen a paint eraser, now you have. <laughs> Me? No, I have. What are you talking about? No, to, oh, to, oh. Anybody. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> seen plenty of those in your studio. <laughs> well, no, I know you have. But, 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 but a paint eraser, it's rubber. So like, if you don't like something, you, you, you can just take, take, take it out. That's cool. So um, Rebecca Hogan asks if we're doing, if we have any plans to do any events in Houston. Um, gosh, I, I don't know, you know, um, I'm sure, I'm sure, sure we will. I know, I know that we're going to San Antonio, which isn't that close to Houston, but we're going to South, more South Texas than what we are now. <laughs> um, we're doing that this summer, June, July. San Antonio? Yeah. You know I don't that know. You're, you're in, you're in. I'm doing that show in that gallery there. The oh, oh, that's, that's right. <laughs> Forgot about that, yeah. Yeah, that's July. Um, yep. A show, yeah. In, well, we get a few, I'm, I'm on the board of directors for Guide Dogs of Texas, which is also in San Antonio. So we go down there. But Houston, um, you yeah, know, we did the Bayou Arts Festival last year. Yeah. This year, this year we didn't, we didn't, um, we, we, didn't you know, we, we, we skipped it because it, it was conflicting. But it's we might, yeah. we might, we might come back for fall. But um, yeah. Or yeah, the fall one they have in Main Street or something. I don't know. Yeah, I, and we're. I love festivals. They're fun and they're. You get to talk to people. Yeah, corn dogs. <laughs> yeah, corn dogs. They have uh, everything on a stick. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll inevitably we'll find ourselves in, in Houston pro within the year, I'm sure. So, yeah, we're we're also um we also were super fortunate enough that somebody came forward and offered to um help with our website, like to, you know, get it up, get it, I don't know, just better. Better, yeah. <laughs> just get better. It I better. mean, it, it, it works well now. We we dig it, but um, he he's going to hopefully do some really awesome stuff. So part of that is updating, like, where we're constantly going to be and what's happening. And um, another really cool thing, which I'm just going to go ahead and say, is that we want to feature some way on the front page of the website to feature other people's art. So, like, I don't know, we haven't w worked it out yet if it'll be an Instagram account that just feeds into it, but everybody out there that, like, watches or, you know, we kind of talk to regularly that's, you know, wants to share art or, you know, just yeah. be like, I did this and it's cool, I would just feed on onto the site so we can all keep up the chat and community and all that. So, anyway, long story short, we're hoping to post more uh, upcoming events. And so... It, in the next month, the site should be pretty updated with where what we're doing, and then from there it'll be regular. Yeah, and this year, I mean, um, I'm going to be in California, Missouri, yeah. Louisiana again, um, California again, and then um, gosh, I don't even know. Yeah, um, it's nutty. A ton of places. Um, I don't know. It's yeah, a so ton we'll of yeah. yeah <laughs> Ohio, maybe <laughs> Iowa. I don't know. There. Yeah, I, um, yeah, it's crazy. I get I get confused. Um, but, um, oh, and, and uh, Valerie, um, said, asked if we'd be interested in coming to Flagstaff to do a presentation and show if, um, she could pull it together and get a grant. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll be there, you know, yesterday. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, you know, you know, it's funny, that, um, Flagstaff, oh, man. Um, it's, it's on our way to the Grand Canyon. That yeah, oh, oh, no, 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 I remember, I, I was just trying to think, I, I was just in Arizona, like, six weeks ago so mm -hmm. yeah i would love to go back man absolutely oh i, I love flagstaff too that, that was such a cool town i've only been really there once cool well twice you know going in the green canyon coming back but we hung out there for a bit yeah oh I mean, yeah i just have a neat feel to it and plus any chance i get to talk about art and my favorite subject myself then i'm down <laughs> so right right now about the painting really quick what i'm doing um i'm i've got the songs in my head <laughs> to enter Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> you know, I won't, I won't, I won't do it anymore. I don't want to ruin Jimmy for anybody. He's like, I can't hear that song anymore. John, run! They tried to hum it. <laughs> and 
and the voodoo child and the, oh man so but i'm putting down some, some background color so i'm trying to cover up um, the other area that, that i had done earlier um that was done i should say and watch your shoulder on the, on the oh camera. oh thank thank you and um and then I'm going to morph it up a little bit because I, I, I've, been, I've been thinking about this painting all day. One, one, one thing that's interesting about this live stream and whenever I do a painting for it, um, it forces me to wait on something because most of the time I figure something out and I'm going to write on it. So this, uh, you know, I've been thinking about it all day because I know I couldn't start till 7. I couldn't start till 7. So I was thinking, like, what do I do? What do I do? So I've been thinking about it. So I'm getting the paint down pretty quick because I've had, you know, all day to think about it and yesterday. And <laughs> so it's going down pretty quick. But it's going to morph a little bit because what I want to do is get some basic notes, some things that I'm hearing, that I was thinking. And I thought, man, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want some lighter over here. Um, I, want, I want to get some of this uh, dioxin and purple, I want to get some cerulean blue, mix up some of this red. Um, do you remember where in Arizona the uh, No Limits or anything? Or what, what oh, no. It, no barriers? I don't know. It was on, on a mountain. It was on a mountain in the desert, and it's. Um, near a town but um honestly like when, whenever we landed at the airport i can't i don't remember what airport because i'm ridiculous i don't remember the stuff sometimes like that but we drove for like an hour and a half or something yeah and what was there or an hour there? i don't know <laughs> maybe two hours i don't know we drove for days i don't know <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember um i could look it up but even when i was there on the mountain i didn't find out what town was even near until we were leaving and i was like just just as a you know, just as a point of curiosity, you know, I, I say, well, hey, what town are we close? I'm like, oh, it would be whatever. And because we were, um, we were actually in a lodge on a mountain that wasn't really near anything. It wasn't called Superstitious Mountain, was it? That does kind of ring a bell. Well, but, Sue um, Clark chimed in and just wrote that as as if she knows something. I don't. <laughs> maybe. It, well, it could be. I mean, it sounds familiar, but one one of the things going out there was for like this retreat, um, which was which was kind of interesting, but. Um, they they had they had they had different people that would come out and do, do talks. So I was one of the people, and then um, other people would pay to be there. And then they had all these different things. Then you hang out with the people that were there to give the talks, and really, really, really cool. It was a no barrier summit, and um, man, really cool people. Just just amazing. And a really great experience. I mean, the whole thing. The entire experience was was like um, just trying to be a better person, like trying to get in touch with yourself more, you know, to do whatever it is that you need to do and do it better, but not like in a I don't I don't I don't want to say not like in a hippy dippy kind of way, but but I mean it was just you know it was very like real sort of work, you know, where you're kind of thinking about it and uh, but in a fun thing, I mean, like we drove rode horses and uh, Valerie and, wrote Prescott. No, yeah, uh, that doesn't know. sound familiar. Yeah, I don't remember hearing that. Yeah, and it was definitely. <laughs> you never know where you're going. You just take the plane and wait for somebody to grab your arm. I know. I thought about that. <laughs> uh, the other time I thought, you know, because I was somewhere and I thought, you know, if whoever doesn't show up, I wonder what I would do. I wonder where I would go. <laughs> and I thought, well, I, I usually try to travel. It's funny. I usually try to travel with enough money for a ticket home. That's never <laughs> just that's sort of my thing because um, I'm really bad about time and dates and stuff like that. And it's never been an issue, but, you know. I don't know. I just want to make sure I get back home. Well, Owen mentioned um, in an earlier comment that he was um, still trying to work through the process of understanding how to price commissions and stuff. Oh. Do you want to chat um, about that? Sure. I mean, just like what, you know, how yeah. you kind of figure it out. Yeah, you know, you know, and you're probably no more about... Because normally if somebody says, hey, how much is the painting? I say, oh, you know, you need to talk to Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> I'm the one that delivers the bad That's why you ask my go-to. <laughs> like, mm, money, mm, talk Jackie. <laughs> well, I know, I know what we've done in the past is just, I mean, you have your regular generic prices, and we go by size usually. Yeah, so, so that's, that just makes sense. Yeah, if it's a commission, then you just tack on a tiny bit more. I mean, not not even ask. Or, or not. I mean, it depends. I, yeah, I mean, I get, I mean, I get. Yeah, I, I mean, get, we don't really, I mean. With anything, you have to kind I of just. I don't really tack on anything more. I mean, well, I mean, well, it's, if it's a portrait. Well, yeah. If it's a definitely. portrait, it's different because a portrait is, it takes a lot more time. So we t tack on a little bit more for a portrait because. 
Well, um, and, and if you get that wrong. Yeah, and if you get it wrong, then <laughs> no one else that. is going to want that portrait. Where, like, if somebody... If somebody get, gives me license to do like you know like if I if I agree to a, to do a portrait it's you know it's that's definitely doing a painting for someone where most of the time if somebody wants a commission they'll say oh I want a painting of like James Dean or I want a painting of yeah. Jimi Hendrix or something I'm like oh cool I love Jimi Hendrix and I'll do a painting I really like I think it's cool and I'll you know but if it's a painting of I want to do a painting of my aunt Thelma you know like no one else is gonna want a painting of your aunt Thelma you know it's <laughs> Yeah. So it needs to be really accurate. It needs to be right, and it needs to match Thelma. And Thelma, yeah. so we charge a little bit more because also it takes a lot longer to do a portrait. Yeah. 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 So, um, but and that so I, I guess you don't charge any more for no, than normal. I, 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 often it's a little less. I mean, depend. And I also, um, I offer a discount for people with disabilities usually, or people with health disabilities, and friends and family discount. Friends and family discount. Yeah. So I mean, it it, it depends, but. Um, um, you know, usually with the commissions, and I handle commissions different than most people do, and it works for me, but it doesn't mean it would work for anybody else. I mean, I don't know why it works for me. I just, I don't know. Like, I, I um, and also with my, a lot of my paintings, shipping is an issue. It's really hard. I don't know. I mean, I know maybe it's because I, I don't have a, a um, brain for that kind of stuff. So when I first started selling, like nine years ago or ten years ago, or whatever it was, um, I'd sell the painting. We do an email. A lot of my sales are out of state or out of the country, so so it's almost always shipping. You know, I almost always have to ship. Most of my stuff goes out other places. Um, so I would I would quote the painting, and then I have to find out about the shipping, and you go to the shipping place, and then they give you a quote, and then you go to actually ship it, and it's always different. I don't know why. It's always yeah. different, and then, and so and then you you got to re talk to the person, and it's like five or six emails for a painting. So what I started doing is just covering shipping, just saying, you know what, um, when you get the painting, it's like order wants a painting from me. If it's a smaller painting, like um, eighteen by twenty four or under, I frame it for free. I just frame it. So when you get it, I want you to be able to hang it on the wall. If it's a bigger canvas, I get the big deep gallery wrap canvases. They look just they're gorgeous. They look really neat. And then I, I, I fix them out to be hung so that whatever size you get, you get it and you can hang it. Shipping, I just cover. I just figure, you know. For anything 18 by 24 smaller, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for smaller. Yeah, that's right, for the smaller ones. For the larger ones, shipping is just astronomical. Yeah, I mean, and there's I, some things we can do. Like you can, oh, Owen, or anybody else that's shipping art. If you have a large painting, it goes over like what? What is it? Like 40? 56 inches. Yeah, if it goes over 56 inches. It has to be freight. Yeah, it has to be freight. That's a good point. And it's also costs a lot for that. But one of the things you can do too, if the buyer is willing to stretch the canvas once they get it, um, you you can actually take the, the canvas off the stretcher. Um, and of course, like the stretcher, here, let me show you Jimmy really quick. So is, it, is this okay? Uh, yep. Okay, so that's Jimmy. Wait, no, that, that's Jim. Oh, oh, yes. Jim, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's Jim. That's Jimmy. <laughs> That's Jim. That's Jimmy. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, so this wooden part is, is, is a stretcher. And as you can see, this is a thin um, gallery wrap canvas. And the reason that I use these for the, the, this size is because every time I sell a painting, I, ha I, I use a, 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 an illusion frame that goes around it. So, so this is just part of it, and it has this frame that, that doesn't touch the side and it goes around. It just looks really good. Oh, I'm sorry, I hit the camera. So it looks really good, and, um, and it works. So what? So what you can do too for a large, a large canvas like that. I mean, a large canvas like you know, like, you know, you you can actually take it off that wooden stretcher and roll it and put it in a tube, and it so it it ships for very very cheap. So it's a great way to be able to. Ship a large painting or small painting or whatever, and any framer can restretch it. And if anybody has an art friend or something that um, um, they they can do it for you. I mean, it's really easy and it's cheap. So shipping art that 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 kind of makes it easy peasy if you roll it like that. And a lot of the, the customers that we have overseas, like if I sell the sixteen by twenty, like we we ship overseas constantly. Um, you know, prints and, and, and paintings. So this week, I mean, I think we, we have a couple of paintings going to Dubai. We have one going to 
Germany. I'm not sure. Yeah, I just sent it today. Just yeah, the Germany and prints are going everywhere. So, in the prints, like if they're even if you can't you can't roll a print, um, you know we we map them and all, and um, and the shipping is just astronomical. So for a lot of those, we also offer a flat print that you can roll. I know that's a really long answer, and I didn't really answer the question. I don't think, but it's um, it's just it's just kind of it's it's a hard thing sometimes. Doing art like that, like being able to, and, and I don't really think I answered your question, Owen. I'm not sure. Well, it wasn't necessarily a question. It was just sort of a well, and then, and then he said, "Yeah, workshop, you know, discussing commissions would be cool." Yeah, yeah, man, that that would be cool. Yeah, you know, we could. You know, it'd be interesting if um, if we get enough artists that were interested. If, I mean, we, we could have a special live stream session on a different night, too, you know, and and just chat about that. Or we could do it on a Friday or something, you know, but um, just talk about the intricacies of the art world, you know, how to how to get shows in the gallery, how to work with this, how to how to ship your art, the basics, how to do printmaking. And prints are a big thing. They're awesome. Okay, let me, let me, let me talk really quickly about this. Oh, what time is it? What time is it, by the way? 7 Oh, nice. I should have called it, man. I was going to say, has it been an hour? should have called it. I would have like a champ. Um, hold it one sec. It's been a really weird week. It's been a great week. It's been awesome. I ran into a pole the other day. Oh, gosh. And my eye is killing me. Hold one sec. I want to. I just got to rub it. Now, I'm good at getting around. <laughs> and if I'm behind my easel, I'm at home. You know, I've had people write, write me. They'll say, oh, man. You can't tell that you're visually impaired or whatever when you're on camera and whatnot. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. You know, that's, that's funny. Um, I talked to tons and tons of visually impaired people. And the, and the one thing that, that, that said a lot to them is like, are you really blind or can you, how do you get around? How do you do that? Because most people don't expect a visually impaired person to be able to do anything. And, um, um, but you learn techniques. It's like anything. You know, you learn how to use your senses in different ways. But in my studio, I'm at home. I can, you know, I know where everything is for the most part. So are you doing the technique of the week? In a minute. Okay. And, no, I mean, I'm talking about this. Okay. Right. Yeah. And, and, but in the backyard, I'm usually um, I'm at home too, but we, we're, we're setting up, we're doing um, the Deep Ellum Arts Festival next week. So the next week's live stream is going to be a little weird. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. I'm, I'm about weird. It could be really cool. It could be crazy. I don't know. Um, so we, we got this huge tent that we set up. We're, we're doubling up this year. So we have a 20-foot tent. And um, we have poles everywhere. I didn't, I forgot. I completely forgot. I set up a pole, and I walked. I mean, like straight on into it. So that the pole, you know, it's like long. It went right around my eye. And thank goodness I wasn't wearing my glasses. Although if I'd worn my glasses, I wouldn't hurt myself. Mm. But my glasses um, will break and I'll heal. But um, but like the hole of the pole went like right around my eye. So my eye was in the middle of it, like which was perfect because it would because I I don't know to blink. So I didn't even know I was running into it. So I'd already hit it. And, um, and that's one reason I wear glasses, because if there's tree limbs and stuff in the neighborhood we live, and stuff, and the kids, you know, shooting Nerf darts all the time and different things, um, I don't know to blink until I've already been hit. So having glass over it is a good thing. So anyway, technique of the week. All right. <laughs> technique of the week. There you go. All righty. So technique of the week. This week I thought I'd talk about mediums a little bit. I feel like I'm doing a commercial. All of a so this week don't 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 act now. <laughs> don't hurt now. You'll get two of these for the price of one. Now, um, um, I I use a lot of different mediums in my paint, and on here, if you'll notice on this canvas, um, there's a lot of color, and there's a lot of stuff. And right now I can't touch it. It's it's a little too wet. In my mind, I have an idea of what I wanted to do. And the, re and, and the way that I can keep track of this is really a mnemonic device because I'm painting music. So to go back through, I'm thinking, like, well, where was the blue? Well, they're saying, like, oh, it must be over here. Now, when it dries a little bit where I can touch it, uh, but it's still wet underneath, then uh, uh, that's where the medium comes in, into play, too. Because um, the blue feels different than the orange. The orange feels different than the pink. And it's because of the things that add to it. One of the things I add to it is this. This is that Gloss Super Heavy Gel. Um, and I've got a tub of it here. So I'll show you this stuff. It is very thick. Very. Oh. 
Yeah. It's very thick. It's not going anywhere. Yeah. Rigid, thick. It's like marshmallow. Cream, but thicker than that. It's it's almost like um if you think about um joint compound or you know plaster sort of stuff, it's it's like it's like that. But but it's it's very ma malleable. Now this stuff, um, I won't even show it's like water. And this is the varnish that I use. Um, but it's like water, but it has this sort of slick feeling to it. So it gives it a very it gives any paint that's mixed to it a very different feeling. Plus it'll make it really shiny. So if you want really shiny paint, out just out of the gate, you can use this. And it gives it this wonderful sort of glossy, like blah, sort of feel. Um, and this is also the varnish that I use. Um to protect the paint and it actually works really really well another medium i use is iridescent medium and it's also made by liquitex um which liquitex should probably be painting us don't you think no joke <laughs> so um and this stuff it just makes it even though it's iridescent it'll give the paint a different feel usually i choose enough of it unless i want it to look iridescent i'll choose enough of it to, to make the paint feel different because it gives it a bit the viscosity is a little bit different does it like do different things to the light like i mean it, it, it can if you use enough of this it'll it'll give it the more of a shiny glinty sort of look but it depends on how much like i if unless i want it to look like that i won't put that much i'll spend a little bit because it doesn't change it that much yeah. um if you just use a little bit it'll give it more of a creamy kind of feel so really slick creamy now where's this this stuff this stuff is weird it's it's it's, it's acrylic flow release and oh, yeah. this stuff is really cool this stuff is really neat it's um it just makes it it makes it flow more and it, it it's hard to explain i'm not sure what what, what sort of ad, adjective you would use it's a different viscosity than the other ones but so it just feels different and I'm not really sure I mean you could try it out you can see you see the difference but it's more of a slick sort of feeling it's almost like oil it almost feels like oil in a way but it's not that's why it's hard to explain is this kind of like oil but it's not but if you take this the acrylic flow release well actually if you take paint and you mix the paint with this stuff the gloss super heavy gel and then you thin it down a little bit with this you end up with this stuff that's very much like a thin oil paint where where you can actually feel the bristle strokes. That's cool. It's, yeah, it's neat. So, you know, it's cool. So this stuff alone, it's like Van Gogh in a bucket. Um, it's like oil paint. And a lot of my paintings, I used to paint in oils. I painted for, in oils for seven years. I love oils. I just don't paint anymore because um, the acrylics dry quicker. And the acrylics have actually, I think, have gone further than oils did. I mean, oils, oils had their heyday, but now it's acrylics. Only because of the different mediums and stuff, for me at least, or my opinion. I'm not, and I'm not knocking oils, I still love oils. And um, I, Gosh, I was in, um, it was a hot spring, I was, I was in, um, no, was in Santa Barbara, maybe um, six weeks ago. And um, I was walking down the street and with, uh, with um, a cinematographer friend guy, and I was like, oh, I smell something, I smell something. And I drug him off the street and I found a painter that was like, they were just painting in like in a gallery that was closed. And <laughs> went in through a door because I smelled the oil paint. I love oil paint. It scared the crap out of him. <laughs> but but he was really, he was really nice. Painters are cool people and by, by and large. But um, um, yeah, he wasn't, his gallery was closed. But oh, <laughs> I just love that paint, that smell. And, um, but with this stuff, it actually feels like, it looks like oil paint. It doesn't feel as much like it. A little bit. It makes it creamy. It feels a bit maybe like a cerulean blue with a titanium white oil paint. If you mix those together, if you know what that feels like. Uh, if not, it looks like oil paint. That's the main thing. So, so many people look at my acrylic paintings, the big, thick impasto paintings, and they go like, oh, it's oils, obviously. And it's not. It's, it's acrylic with this stuff. But if you want to thin it down, you can mix it. You can take this, thin it with a little bit of this. And you get that wonderful Rembrandt sort of feeling where you can actually feel the bristles in the paint. And it looks like it. You get the stippling. If you know what stippling is, you know, it's where you take the brush and you bounce it off the the, um, the canvas so that you get these little rays, kind of little little things. You can do that when you mix those two together. The cool thing about mediums, though, is that it makes your paint so much more versatile. So sometimes when you're looking at a composition, you're thinking about line and shape. And you're not sure. You know that your painting is missing something. You're not. You're thinking, well, what color can I use? And, 
and I, I you know I get really frustrated because there's a whole wealth of emotion and there's only like one rainbow of colors that's it we only really get one rainbow that's not enough color <laughs> um, you know to really to convey it well remember there's also texture and you can use all kinds of different mediums and I, I've, I've shown you a few you could also mix water with it you can blend the different mediums together there's other mediums like I have a medium over there which I should have grabbed probably but it's just another container it looks like another container but it, it makes the paint so thick that you can carve it with a knife there's paint there's mediums that you can mix with the paint that makes it like modeling paste even but it's still paint it's really cool I don't know so the technique of the week is just to go out and have some fun with some mediums really you know like look at them try them play around with them um yeah if anybody tries it and mm -hmm. you know has just wants to share with mm -hmm. us you know they could send you an email and oh, yeah. we can uh post the photos next week or something man that'd be cool that would be or cool or share on the facebook page i would love that i would love to see all these guys work i know i keep saying this because the reason i started showing my art in the very beginning and why I still love to, well, one of the reasons I still love to, and there's so many reasons to love art and be able to connect with people, but the reason I started showing was to connect with other artists. So I really, really would love to see y'all's work, and I'd love to help get the work out there a little bit more. And uh, and guys, I got to say, this is, this is incredible. Whenever we first started doing this show, which this is only our fourth, fifth one, um, a month, you know, we've only been doing it a month, and we, and we thought, you know, hey, we want to do it because it's fun. We want to chat with people, and we love talking about art. We're in the studio anyway. Might as well, you know, and um, we thought, well, we'll be happy if we get six people to tune in. And since then, our, our YouTube channel has like 12,500 views. No, yeah. Which is ridiculous. Well, Rebecca asked what festival we're about to go to that you just mentioned. Oh, Rebecca, we're going to the Deep Ellum Arts Festival, and this is the second time we've done it. This time, we're going to be twice as big. It's going to be huge. I'm going to have a painting area, so I'm going to be live painting there the entire, well, not the entire time, uh, uh, because we, I usually stay at the festival longer than what the artists usually stay, so I, I'm usually there a couple hours longer, um, because as long as it's open, I'm usually there, you know, and, and so I'm not going to say I'm going to paint 12 hours every day <laughs> that we're there, but I'll be painting a good chunk of it, though. Yeah, it's, it's still a lot of talking, and yeah, it's a lot of talking, and a lot of fun, and you get to meet so many different people, it's so fun to festivals i don't know we've done like 70 80 shows and in galleries and which is ridiculous i was counting it up and then the cool thing about a festival is that you actually get to be face to face with somebody that's talking about your art you get to meet so many different artists not only people that are showing in the show but um you know they're just walking around and they're interested in art you get to hear about all these experiences and i've never done a show or a festival where i didn't come back and i was excited and had a new take where I met an artist or I was talking about somebody that was working on art and I think like yeah that, that, that completely makes sense I want to go back and try that and so I can't wait to see what the experience is next Friday we're actually going to live stream from that festival yeah so if you're in the Dallas area this a deep Ellum arts, arts festival now we're really close to the Texas stage like we're like one of the last places so if you're there this festival isn't that huge it's one street it's main street there in um in Dallas in deep Ellum and last year we were on one end this this year we're on the other end because we have a double um so it's a lot more room a lot more you know art a lot more everything really yeah it, and yeah. i think we're next to the drink station so <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if it's where the, in the where you go to get the coupons or you actually get the drinks yeah. but um either way you know it'll be easy to find it will it'll be easy to find yeah we're, we're yeah because the, the stage we're at is is the main stage yeah the main yeah so it'll be it'll be a party mm. And we're um, we're doing the Denton Arts and Jazz Festival, and we're actually doing, um, we'll be doing a, an article, and they're writing an article about us being there. I think this Monday. Yeah, that's great. So we'll have an interview for that. And um, you know, one of the great thing about these these festivals is that you get the real feel of the town that you're in. So we do them in Tulsa, done them in some others. Like we just started this like two years ago, and the first year we only did two, because we weren't sure. We're like, what 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 are these even like? And we had a blast. It was a lot of work, but it was a blast though and you really got to meet people so the next year we did twice as many and this year we're probably gonna do twice as many as we did last time because it's really really interesting you're in a town for you know a period of days you get to meet so many people from there um like tulsa the mayfest we're, we're gonna be there and that's a really good example i probably talked to 50 people 
there that were so excited about Tulsa's downtown area because they re renovated it. And people would come up and like, you know, like, oh, I really like this area. And they're like, heck yeah, we renovated You know, the people are excited about their town and you get to hear about it. And it's just, I don't know, for me, it's neat. So, oh, and I, I got these sunglasses in Tulsa because of Yeah, that was my question. Which I've never had a nice pair of sunglasses before. <laughs> my go-to sunglasses are the $5 Target Walmart ones. These are uh, Oakley. Hold on, I got to pose with them. <laughs> there, okay. It's my blue steel. <laughs> okay. But um, and, but the only reason I got a more expensive pair is I think I walked into another pole. What is it about poles? That, that, it was a pole, wasn't it? It was something on me. Yeah, like I ran into a pole and I broke the thing. And we're going to try to tape it together, but I mean, it would, it would not, you know, it would. It, would, it was it, ridiculous. All, all we had was duct tape and it just wouldn't have worked. Yeah, and for somebody that wears sunglasses every day and. Yeah. Just, uh, all day. You might as well get a good pair. Uh, that's why I love her. I'm sitting yeah. that sweet. Um, <laughs> well, and, hey, and the only place we could go because I don't drive and we're at the festival like we're doing that. We're doing, the art show's going on. There's people. Um, um, our, our friend there, Shane, Shane Bevel, which is this really, really amazing guy, and he's so cool. He's a photographer. Does amazing pictures. Just like the art. Every every clicks an art piece. And he was saying, oh, you know, my my uh, optometrist is like 50 feet down the <laughs> down the, the street right here. And then she sells sunglasses, so I went in there. Of course, the only kind she sells are like really expensive, fancy ones. Fancy yeah. ones. I was like, "Thanks, Shane." Jeez. <laughs> well, way, hey, uh, way to spend my money, Shane. Yeah. So Owen, um, Owen said in something interesting. He says he's been using ripped up tissues and coffee filters glued on canvas and painted over as wow. uh, to use for some of his textural paintings. And he's been getting a lot of positive feedback for it. Man, Owen, that is really cool, buddy. Um. That's interesting. I've never tried that. I've never done that. I um, that is really cool. I mean, that's 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 really think thinking outside the box too with that. Um, it's interesting, you know, and that's and that's cool that you did that because it's an inexpensive way to add texture. One of the things I was thinking about these mediums is that um, one thing that kept me out of working with different mediums is that they're really expensive. They can be, you know, if you're trying something, you know, you don't know if you're really going to use it, and you're, you're at the art store, and it's like. It's fifteen dollars for a tiny bottle, you know. And you're thinking like, mm, I may get one squirt out of that bottle and hate it, you know, and never want to use it yeah. again. Or it's twenty five bucks for this little little jug of it or something. Yeah. Um, you know, you never know. So, um, um, but something like a tissue and in a in a, a, a coffee filter, that is a brilliant idea. That's so cool. And art doesn't have to be expensive. I mean, like the palette that I'm using is actually an old board, and I'm using it because it works better than any store bought palette that I've had. Because I wrap it with a wax paper, which costs a penny, maybe, maybe a penny, maybe not even a penny. And it's huge, and it's nice, and it's big, and I can even slap the paint on it when I'm done with it. And, you know, it's all chunked up. Instead of thinking like, oh, man, I, you know, I can't get that. I've got to spend an hour in the kitchen or the wherever trying to get the paint off of it. I just throw it away. You know, I throw the wax paper away and put more wax paper down for less than a penny, and I'm good to go. Yeah. You know, you don't have to spend a ton of money. Well, I know, like, when, when, um... You know, when I was painting back in the day, when we first met, I was using, I was, my big thing was doing lots of textural painting and, and I mean, I <laughs> just coming off of college, didn't have any money. So I would go out to Home Depot and I would buy, um, just like the caulking fluid and stuff that, and, and I would just do the texture with the caulking gun. And then, um, another cool texture that I found was, um, there's this material that you can buy at Home Depot that's that if you spill a giant thing of paint, like when you're painting your house, you spr you um, sprinkle this uh, stuff over it, and it just instantly like soaks up all the paint. And so I would, um, you know, get my I painted in latex house paints because I wasn't I wasn't about like keeping them. I don't really care. I was more expressive than anything. Hey, Pollock, you know? Yeah, yeah. There we go. So so I I would just make I I would just like you know, get buckets of uh, latex paint and I would pour this stuff in it that would soak up the paint and then I would just lay texture all over the thing. But it, it created this sort of weird, rocky, bubbly texture all through the painting. And it was pretty cool. I mean, I was all, all, but my stuff was all super abstract. So you kind of get away with yeah any sort of wacky feeling in the texture. You know, Jackie, she doesn't, she doesn't paint really anymore. Or, or a lot like like you went through that phase or whatever but one of her paintings is hanging in the hall and it's huge it's like six feet by four feet 
and it's really cool. It's a, it's, it's, it's at the Zen, Zen Gardens in Fort Worth, and it's a, and um, but it's abstract, so it has these really lines. It has this cool sort of, sort of texture, and I swear most people that come in the house, and they're coming like if they're coming to look at my artwork or something, they'll they'll come in and they'll look at them and go like, oh, I really like this piece. I'm like, it's not mine. <laughs> Oh. And then and then they'll walk in a little further and, and Andy Siri, her brother, is this incredible artist and teacher, um, has has a couple of pieces that are there which are amazing. Dang it. <laughs> then they'll look at those and they'll be like, Well the, wow, they, these are really cool. I really love these. Like, those aren't mine either. Oh. <laughs> God. Well, and they all they all have a different feel, so it's 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 pretty cool. You know that and that the Zen garden one that I did just to give the the viewers some you know insider information um when John proposed to me he proposed at the Fort Worth Botanical Gardens in the Japanese garden so there you know which actually was quite hilarious the whole scenario because <laughs> <laughs> there was an um an Asian tour group that was going through and taking a lot of pictures and John got on his knee and became very much a sort of tourist photo at that point and it was actually pretty funny but anyway <laughs> anyway so I, I love the whole idea of you know the, this sort of minimalistic clean lines and just uh, serene feel and so you know and, and because wow. you had proposed to me and it was all sweet and everything so we just figured why not you know and that, I mean the whole painting is it's a huge painting but it's all white I mean it's stark white outside of the dirt that has gathered on it, but it's dark white and it's and it's just a depiction of what a Zen garden would look like. Yeah. But yeah, all the pieces are different in our living room, so yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's an it's a nice collection of, of wacky stuff. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Oh I wanna give some something away. Oh. Okay. Oh oh yeah, okay, okay. So you wanna talk about that? Yeah. For sure. Or do you do you? I will. Okay, so oh, I don't, I'll do it. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, John set up a question for this week, and we've got a, a new thing. Okay, the deal is, 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 and Jack's not in here to help me, but um, we're gonna put up a question, and for the duration that the question is up on the screen, write in the answer on the chat. And then as soon as I take the question, or as soon as I display the answer, then... I'll go grab Jack real quick. Okay. Okay. Um, as soon as I display the answer, then everybody that has answered correctly before then, I'll take your name and I'll put it in the hat. So um, the thing that we were thinking about giving away this week was either a medium-sized print or we have these new things that are really cool and they're guitar picks with an image of John's paintings on them. So, um, which he just went away, so I can't show you what <laughs> what is on them. But um, uh, basically we took like the James Dean painting and Bob Marley and all that and you printed on the guitar pick. So if you win, you get the choice of either the uh, medium sized print or you get the choice of the guitar pick. You can, you know, whatever you want, we'll mail it to you if your name is drawn out of the hat from entering in the right answer into the chat. So um, let me go ahead and put that question up. And as soon as I put up the answer, that'll be the stopping point of anybody being able to answer on the chat. So the question is, which of these painters work was not inspired by music? A, Kandinsky, B, Whistler, C, Monet, or D, Chagall? And it was funny because John asked me and I had no clue. So, which of these painters work is not inspired by music? A, Kandinsky, B, Whistler, C, Monet, or D, Chagall? So go if you know the if you <laughs> if you think you know the answer, go ahead and write it in on the chat, and then I will take down your name, put it in a hat, and Jack will pick it out of the hat, and then that person can either choose a medium-sized print or a um, guitar pick. 
And if you're if you don't play the guitar, you can always give it to a loved one. <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, and I'll and I'll show the guitar picks too. That's on there. And I, I went and tried to get Jack, but um, Liz is still here. Liz, Liz, Liz helps do the um, the prints and everything, and she makes all the prints. Um, or, or most, of, yeah. So she, she just prints, but she's um, her and Jack are in this vicious video game <laughs> <laughs> turmoil thing. I'm not yeah. sure what they're playing, but they're very enthralled with it. So you know. So I'm afraid it's, we're on our own on this one. All right, so we've got some people that have chimed in. This is your last chance. I'm about to put the answer up. Oh, come on. It was, so it was, it was, even it if you're not sure, you should guess. Just guess. Yeah, just guess. Right just guess. It's free. It's free. <laughs> you're free. No, let's, let's, let's wait a second. Let's give this money just, just a okay, little bit. I'm going to leave it up there. Because I just feel like there's somebody out there that yeah. just like, they just like. Oh, okay, cool. I'm going to go get some, some post-its to write the names down. Oh, cool. Well, I put I put everything. I put you a, um, a, a, fr a blank piece of paper. Oh, and some perfect. perfect, perfect, perfect. Right over there. Awesome. No, just back up. Oh, if you're if you're if you're going now. Oh, I got you. No, I'm, I'm okay. So, are we ready? Is everybody chimed in? Okay. Which of these painters' work was not inspired by music? Dun, dun, the dun, answer. Dun, 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 dun. You googled this, right? You know this, right? Oh, well, yeah, I knew it. But I, I, I Googled it to make sure I was right. Okay. <laughs> but I, was, I thought, is, that's right, right? All right. So the answer is... Monet. Monet. Claude. <laughs> so... Good old Claude. Yeah, but and the thing about Claude, too, is that... Claude, Claude, Claude like I know... Like, like we hang out all the time. Well, here's the thing about Claude. Um, you know, it, it is impressionistic, so, you know, it's very loose and whatnot, but... um. But he, he didn't really paint from music. I thought about adding Picasso on there too, because if uh, if you go like to, to the Metropolitan um, Opera, there's a trio there that he did, and it's one of the most famous like trio paintings that's ever been done. But he didn't really use music as his inspiration. Like he would do a musical painting, like he loved to paint guitars and things like that. So I love Picasso on, off there as well. I was just looking for painters that actually use the music as, as the inspiration for their their um, their art like Kandinsky I love Kandinsky Jackie and I we we, we went to to the Guggenheim there um, once in New York where when they were doing a show of, of all the Kandinsky's and you walk up and and um, Kandinsky was really interesting because he thought painting was sort of the visual equivalent of writing a, a symphony so was, and he was um really inspired by by Wagner or Wagner or however, however, however you want to pronounce that but he, 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 he loved Wagner, and um, he liked to use colors and shapes to help try to evoke the sounds. And he even named his his, his um, paintings like Composition B or this. You know, he tried to he named them almost almost like they were um, um, songs. Whistler he went through different periods as well, and um, and like in the in the, in, the, in the 1860s he worked on paintings he called harmonies. Then later on, he experimented with nocturnes, and then in the 70s, he moved, moved on to, to full symphonies of paintings, which is interesting. I thought it was cool. But Marc Chagall, he's got to be one of, the, one of the biggest ones that actually used music as an in, influence. Although, I love Kandinsky, but Chagall, though, he worked so much with the ballets, would come up with, like, with the sets, the, the costumes, all these different things for it. And, um, and, and if you go to the Metropolitan o Opera, I believe there's like two huge murals there cool. that he did, which is cool. So if, you wanna, if you're a fan of Marc Chagall, you can go there and see some huge, amazing music-inspired paintings and cool. stuff. I just love music and paintings. I just think yeah. it's really cool. But Okay, so... Oh, you got the... You got the well, also, well I'm, I, 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 have, also I, I have all the names in the hat, so... Oh, okay. You said Jack's not coming in, right? No, they're, 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 they're in a... They're, yeah, it's a and vicious he, battle. Um, so they got the Xbox working? Is that what they're doing? Must have it was a nut. Well, they were when I went out there earlier. Oh, they were like, oh. fix it for us. Oh, there like, you go. We was a video game. <laughs> it's always a crisis with the video games. Okay. I guess. All right, so we only had three people that chimed in with the right answer, um, which I John quizzed me earlier and I got it wrong too. So yeah. I don't, you know. Whatever. Which I was surprised because you said Gandinsky. Well, to be honest, and we went there. <laughs> Well, but yeah. by the, by, I bet you know. To be okay. honest, by the time we spiraled around at the top of the Guggenheim, all the blood was probably yeah. well. To be honest with you, I read the question wrong. Like I, I, I didn't register the not. Oh, I put and it. So I, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> so I was like, oh, music, yeah. So I did anyway. anyway. Oh yeah. All right, so sense. I'm doing the drawing. 
I tricked you. Got you. I know. See? All right. I got the name. Here we go. Oh my gosh. Crinkled this. <laughs> all right, Kate Cox. Hey, all right. All right. Very cool. So it's the choice between a print and a guitar pick. Yeah. Which, do you have a couple of the guitar picks? I wish I had a jewel. Jewel like that. But um, no. Here, here. Well, let me let me switch over to like the the close up of the. So there's James Dean and there's Bob Marley. And there, 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 there are two paintings I did, so we have them on here. Yeah, you can go to the website and check them out, but that they're just reproduced on a guitar pick. And there's five others, you said? Yeah, yeah, there, there's seven in total, and um, and, and they're, they're, they're double sided, and it's a medium thick guitar pick, um, so that you know it's not it's not too flimsy, but it's not so thick that you can't you know that it's weird. Um, so those are cool. We've never had those before. So so Kate, if you congratulations, man, that that's, yeah, that's, that's brilliant. Really cool. And um, so if you want a guitar pick, you'll be the first person ever to have one. If you'd rather have a print, any print that you want, um, a medium sized print, we'll we'll send it out to you, um, next week. Cool. Oh, and um, tell her. Well, here I'll write it into the chat, but to email you all the information so we have a oh a, yes a record of it. Yeah, yeah, and we're and we're, and we're fa Facebook friends. Oh, good. So yeah, yeah, send it. But I, actually, um, yeah, if if you Facebook me, um, I'll get it. And J Jackie will too. Um, but if you email it, then it it goes to yeah, it'll get it to us. Yeah. But so 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 just tell us what you want, and where you want us to send it. Cool. But I was happy with those guitar picks. I wasn't really yeah. sure. A guitar pick sounds weird, but I do. Almost every painting of mine is music inspired. So. Something that had to do with music. It's kind of made sense. So thirsty. All right, so Jimmy. And what is the time, by the way? Uh, 8.29. 8.29, awesome. So there's Jimmy. So he's got a, a riot of color around him. So what is the next step with him? Well... I've got a lot of really thick paint, you know, and I'm, I'm, it's not, it's so thick that it's, it, even though I have a, even though like the mediums I added to it, it helps it dry a little quicker, it's, it's, um, I would love to be able to touch it right now, but I can't. Um, there's some areas I know that I can work, so I'll work on that. But in the meantime, I can show you a couple of things I've been working on. I just finished a, a, a painting of Louis Armstrong. So I'll show that. It's called Waiting for New Orleans. Yeah, it's, that's really awesome. Oh, thank you. Man, I'm such a fan of Louie. He's so cool. And it just kills me that, you know, I have it waiting for New Orleans because he is from New Orleans. You know, he was inspired by the music there. And um, and yet he couldn't go in the front door of the of the different clubs and stuff that he played. They were, even though he was revered, he was on the radio. I mean, people loved him. He was like, oh, Louie Armstrong. But um, didn't matter. Just didn't matter. But over in Europe, he was treated the way you're supposed to be treated. And, and in New Orleans, like he was there, and they wouldn't let him in, into a club. They made him, even though he was headlining, they made him go in through like the servants' entrance or something in the back. And he's like, I'm never going back to New Orleans. He did later on, but he was waiting for New Orleans to change and change and change. And but he eventually went back because it was his home. Now this one is not done. It's not done at all. It's a Bob Marley one, but it's one that I'm working on. Um, so I have, I have it roughly sketched out. It's another music painting, it's, so I just wanted to show it tonight because we're talking about music. Man, and I love Bob Marley. I've done a couple of other Bob Marley paintings. One other portrait um, of him, and then one um, just a, a music painting. So it was very abstract, it was just the music. But I, I, I just, most of my paintings are, um, are music paintings. I even have another one that's over there, and I, I'm all blocked in. I, I'd show it to you, but it's of a woman with a mask. It's like a Mardi Gras mask. Oh, you! Oh, oh thank you. I don't want. I don't want you have to get up. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Oh, thank you. So I have this one that I finished this week as well, and I have some others that I finished, but these are um, the the um, me the music ones. So I'll show this one. So this is more of a New Orleans bounce. If you've never heard New Orleans bounce, um. It sort of, it well, depends. There's there's different types of New Orleans bounce. The um, one of them, 
the one that I like a lot. It's like rap, which I don't listen to a lot of rap, but it has a sort of um, rap sort of thing where it's like lyrics and, and whatnot. Hey, Jack, can you take that out of there, darling? And uh, <laughs> thanks, sweetheart. And um, but there's but so it's a little bit different. It has, it has like the New Orleans sort of bounce kind of feel. I mean, it has this rap sort of feel, but also has the brass and stuff. There's some other New Orleans ba um, that, that doesn't have that. And um, so, but, but I don't know. This though does. It has like the brass, the drums, the, the horns, all this sort of going on. But then it has the lyrics that come in. And it's, I don't know, it makes a nice little mix. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. And I'm working on another New Orleans piece too. And so we'll, we'll see if that works out. And um, so Lisa has chimed in. She's with us. Oh, hey, Lisa. How are you doing? So what, uh, so you should tell the crowd how, um, well, I don't know. I mean, we didn't have a lot of viewers just because it was an off situation, but, um, about the art, the arts festival that we streamed on Saturday. Oh yeah. 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 The, the, the thing on Saturday was a little crazy. It was a special arts festival. It was the ninth year that we've done that. And it was started because, um, we we're doing art, art break in Louisiana. It was the first live event I think we ever did, wasn't it? Um, it was like where we go somewhere and do workshops. It was like the first workshop. It might have been, yeah. I think in 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 like three or four days, four days, we painted three days. I don't know, we painted with like fifteen hundred kids or more. I mean, it was a yeah amazing. And we we put blind, blindfolds on the kids. We'd show them how to paint the way I paint using raised lines and texture in the paint and all that. Yeah. And really cool. It was a lot of fun. Um, and then jackie's mom Mar marilyn siri who's this amazing person and she runs the achievement center of texas which is this brilliant or or, or organization um, they help kids with, with special needs and adults with sp special needs um well she she went there you know most people that see something like that they think well well that's really cool that's that's, that's interesting and um and that's about as far as it goes but she said you know it'd be really nice if we could bring this back to garland the town that she lives so she actually put that together and it took her about a year and then the year after, you know, to, to get everybody on board, to get all the, the facilities, everything, and still working, of course, her full-time job and everything and singing some amazing karaoke every week. <laughs> yeah. And um, and so, so she was able to do that and she put it together and it's just been brilliant every year. And it's just this way to showcase um, children with special needs, but it's not, it, the wonderful thing about it is that it's not like, I don't know. It's, it, I don't know. You, you don't get this heavy-handed sort of feel. It's all optimistic and happy, and you know, it's like you know, we we can make adjustments. We can do these different things, and yeah. it's just fun. Like like there's professional singers that are there every year. So when you go there, it's free, but there's this wonderful entertainment. Plus, the the children perform. There, it's just I don't know. Yeah, like, like this yeah. year they had like thirty acts or something. Oh yeah, yeah. In four yeah. hours, that's a brilliant. It's all yeah. One after another, they're going and going. Yeah, she. I mean, it's always jam-packed with, and they're usually running over and everything into the event. But the, the cool thing about the event is, and, you know, my mom strategically planned this, is that she has a sort of collection of um, professional singers that she knows and um, just are awesome and incredible. And so she'll intermingle the students into these different performances so that, you know, all, all these different uh younger you know singers or performers feel like you know there's nothing different about them they're included into the this sort of professional field of, of other artists and there's no you know i mean there's you know it's not it's not specifically just geared to like you have a disability okay this is your thing it's it's all inclusive and all that so that's what makes it super cool i mean the kids <laughs> it's awesome to watch the kids because they are just superstars for a day. It's awesome, so it's a fun event. It's it, it's 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 a it's a good a good time for sure. Yeah, yeah, and the, and, and the media and the local media started starting to get behind it. Like NBC came out. Um, we, we did an interview with them, um, maybe three three or four days before to help plug the event. And it was great to see that, you know, the whole community is just, you know, it just keeps growing and growing. Like this this year, there was more people out there. Like the media took took attention of it. It's just wonderful to see that as much work as she's put into that, it's really paying off. I mean, it's just the kids are having a blast. And everybody that goes there just has a really good time. Yeah, it was fun.
But I have to apologize though. Um, we know that whenever you stream, and the reason usually in my studio we have the music going, it's you know it's it's you know it's, there's a vibe going. Um, YouTube though, of course, it won't let you play copyrighted music. Obviously, <laughs> yeah. you know over the you know unless you own it and um, or paying for it somehow. And I'm not even sure how you'd pay every song on the radio. So it's like a service, or I don't know. I mean, no, I don't know. Well, hey, Kate, Kate Cox said um, she thinks it's incredible how you can blend colors together in a portrait like that one. She can't seem to figure out how to do that. Do you have any tips or tricks? Yeah. Um, go like, crazy. And, and it's, then, it's okay to go a little nuts. Well, I should say that, the, that she posted this comment when you were, I think, posting the New Orleans mask painting. Oh. So, I mean, blending in that sense. Well, you know, it's funny. Like, with the New Orleans mask, I am... Um, Honestly, the way the way that I got the colors for that painting was I sketched out the basic face and the mask, and then I sat down and listened to a lot of music, <laughs> and, and listened to the colors of the music until I there was the color pattern that I liked that I thought fit it, and then I had to adjust it a little bit to get it to you know, but the colors and stuff. So one of the, one of the things that I think you, um, you should do, like if you want to try some different colors on something. Um, just go for it and go go a little crazy um, and use use complementary colors. They're complementary for a reason, you know. They they help other color. They help them pop a little. And I've noticed a lot of new artists, even artists that have gone on and gotten advanced degrees. They you know they know everything there is about painting. A lot of times their paintings are really dark. Like they don't use color. You know they don't respect the color. I guess I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I mean they do, but it's it's different. I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm weird though. I mean because I just, I just want the colors to be so bright. And, um, you know, which is, I guess that's my thing. I, I don't know. If I have a thing, that's probably it. And, um, but to not worry about it, go ahead and just try something. Like, if you're not sure, like, if you, you know, if you have in your mind, you're wondering, is it going to work? Is it not going to work? Go ahead and put it down and maybe put a light wash of it, you know, or like really, really thin paint that has a tint of that color, you know, so you, if you're sighted, so you can look at it and see what you think. That's what I do in my mind. Imagine it. I think, is that going to work? And then I, I put it down. I feel it sometimes. Because if it doesn't work, you can always white it out. You can just go back over it. And there's some paintings I've done. Like I, I did a painting of a friend of ours. She was actually here, I think, last time. Brooke. Um, I did a painting of her called Western Harajuku. Oh, yeah. That was a good one. Well, thank you. There's seven different outfits that she's wearing underneath the outfit that she's wearing in the original. There's a leopard spotted one. There's like, there's like a red one. There's I mean, it's ridiculously amount of like outfits underneath that one. It's because, like, I would, and it's not, you know, what's funny is that the outfit's not even a big part of the painting. It's like the collar is all that you really see in the shoulder a little bit. And, um, but, it, you know, it has to be right. And what ended up being right for that was a very simple sort of, like, blue kind of thing. And then, but, but I mean, just try it out. I mean, what's the worst that's going to happen? Yeah. And what's what's nice, too, is that, um, I don't know, a lot of times what, what, what kind of gives me the courage to do it, like, if I'm working on a painting, like, I'm working on a painting down there right now of a New Orleans street scene with a girl smoking a cigar. It's not quite coming together, and it's not because of the person that's in the painting. It's not because of the scene. It's not because of the music. It's just, because, you know, it's whatever it is, you know? And it, it, But it probably will come together. I've never done a painting where it, I didn't feel like it was going to come together. I've got another painting over here of, like, a dog and thing. and a, I've got, I mean, I've got... I've got like, I don't know how many paintings going here. I want to say I have like eight or nine paintings going. Every one of them I have a problem with. But just saying to yourself, like, it's okay. You know, it's okay to fail on this painting. If the worst that's going to happen is I'm going to end up with a painting that I don't really like. And you know what happens then? You, you put it aside for a while. You know, you just pull a Cezanne. Um, Cezanne would take, you know, a painting he's working on, he'd put it, he'd put it against his wall somewhere in a studio leave it there for a month or two, then come back to it, look at it, maybe put it back on the easel, mess with it a little bit, look at it, go, meh, put it back on the wall for another month or two, and do that maybe for a year, for two years, for three years. It doesn't really matter. Completing the painting isn't as important as the actual act of painting, I think. Well, uh, Valerie said she'd love to see um, how you paint Led Zeppelin or Warren Hayes slash government mule. Oh, man. I want to see some Led Zeppelin too. Yeah, man. Okay, so question of the day: what What is your favorite Led Zeppelin song? Let's get the lead out. Oh my goodness. 
I know, you know, it's funny. I, I love Led Zeppelin, and I don't hear them that often. But um, but whenever I do, it's like you see, it's just like the right moment. You know, you hear them, you're like, yeah, yeah. Let's get the lead out. <laughs> so, guys, next week is going to be a little weird, and because of the Deep LM Arts Fest, we did that one live. Oh yeah, the Special Arts Festival. If you go back and watch the video, all the live streams we do, they're available on the YouTube channel, and they're also available on our website and our videos. Now, if you go back and listen to that one, you're going to notice you're not listening to anything. <laughs> yeah. There's a whole lot of nothing. And we thought it was because of the copyrighted music, you know, because they'll, they'll, they'll mute the live stream if they, if they notice that you're playing a song or if they hear a song. And we thought since all these people are singing songs that are famous, they probably muted it. We didn't take into account that we never turned the mic on. <laughs> so from the very get go of that, we didn't uh, we had no sound. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. And this Deep Ellum thing is going to be interesting because we live stream using the internet. And right now we don't have a mobile device, but we'll, we're, we're going to get one. So we're going to try to live stream from that area. But it's just interesting. Like, how well is the reception? How well, what is the data stream? Um, we're in the middle of an arts festival. How much can we talk? You know, like, I, I you know, I was, we're, we're going to try to coordinate it. It's I think part of it, I mean, for anybody that tunes in, like, there's there's a couple people that tune in regularly every week, which, thank you. Yes, that's um, what, uh, man, that's what makes it so Yeah, cool. it's super awesome. Um, what, what I imagine is going to go down is that we're going to set up the cameras, maybe two cameras, and in, in a sort of view where you can see the, like, maybe a high shot where you can see the whole tent. And you can see out and see the people coming and going and John talking and just get a vibe for the festival comings and goings in general. And then um, I think what see it's Friday night, so it'll still be bumping. I mean, it'll there'll, there'll be a crowd, so it's it, it's difficult to turn to the camera and and do a, an actual show because John's usually talking to people. But I'll be trying. I'll be monitoring the chats and we'll have a second camera. And so. I don't know, maybe we, we can do, you know, maybe a, maybe a camera where even we're moving or something. Like, I could walk around the festival and show some things, or um, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll walk around the festival before in the day and show some art. There's, like... With the GoPro or something? Yeah, yeah something that we can feed into the, to the camera. I mean, there's one of my all-time favorite artists. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's there. He does the Deep Elm Arts Festival. I absolutely love his work, and I have to buy a piece. Every single time we go, his name his name is David Pound. Forgot about that. Yeah, he does the he does these um little boxes, and inside the little boxes are uh, sculpted heads. You want to do an interview with him? I, I should, I should, and and Pound the, it out. the skull the heads are like, um, I mean they're just these sort of whims. I mean they're they can be dark or or whimsical or whatever. But he uses weird material, like, and this sounds weird, but, you know, chicken bones and, you know. Yeah, I, that part I, I'm not the I big fan some, of. I have some pieces that even use, like, insect parts. Oh, see. Like but I, it's so cool. In fact, I have to go get some. I'm going to have to show it. Yeah. I'll, I'll go get some here. I'm going to. Okay. Rest. Well. And they're, they're just too cool. And anyway, he, so what we could do is um, I could get some footage of just the festival in general, show that. Or even during the live feed, walk around, depending on how we work out the Wi-Fi situation. I'm not quite sure. So anyway, I mean, I mean, why don't you get pieces. why don't you get your your artwork, and I'll, I'll I'll talk to everybody about how one of your favorite artists isn't me. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll, we'll come to terms with that <laughs> while you're gone. I'll have to go through therapy. Hmm. Nah, it's you know you know. But also though, ne next week though, I was thinking if anybody's interested in a whole pop up show. Which is a huge thing. That's so big. And a festival is a type of, of, of pop-up show. It's a place where you're showing art where um, you don't know, normally do it. You know, you're controlling everything. You have all that. So, so whether you're renting a space somewhere, whether you're, um, which is what we're doing. You know, we, um, you know, we have these giant tents and we've got, you know, all this walls and stuff that come up, the lighting, all, all, the, all these different things to make it like a gallery space in this, that's sort of a pop-up. Um, so if anybody has a question, or you know, next week would be a really interesting thing to talk about. If if anybody's interested in how to put a pop up show together, how to work, how to do a festival, how to get into festivals, um, you know, any kind of pop up sort of show, 
Um, cause you know, we can show how we, how we deal with the credit cards, how we do prints, how we do all, all these different sorts of things. So, um, and it's incredible. The reason we started doing the, these pop-up shows like at the festivals is we have some friends or we, we talked to people that owned, um, galleries and quite a few of them were saying they made half their money at these festivals. And we thought, well, good grief, you own a gallery, like a brick and mortar gallery and you're making half your money outside of your gallery you know, we could do the same thing. So we started doing that and it's worked out really, really well. So um, if you do it right, it's a really great way to get your art out there and um, it's going to be really cool. So next week could be a great way of, you know, if anybody has any questions about that. Yeah, yeah, if they tune in and, and, and just, you know, want to get into the festival circuit and get a feel for it. So, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm turning it over to me. <laughs> do it. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so the, this artist, he, he's, I just absolutely love his stuff, but his name is David Pound, um, 20heads.com, and I have to buy a piece every time, but it's it's a little weird. I'm into, I'm into uh, humorous art. That's my, I really love humorous art, but... Um, You're a little weird. It's okay. It, this is an example of one of his pieces. So it's, it's basically like a little box, and inside he sculpts these weird heads, okay? And, and they use different... They, like his teeth are shells, his hair is like um, tree parts, and um, his nose is insect. Like, I think it's the back of a roach. It's pretty gross. Oh, but, what? Oh, yeah. man. What? No, it's cool. No. Anyway, and then this is another piece. You had me know that. Oh, <laughs> Lord, I bought it. I'm sure. This is another piece oh. where he uses gears. I, I just love this guy's stuff. I just, I'm obsessed. Anyway. I have to buy a piece every time, and they they get crazier. And he gets commissioned to do. Um, I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, I think you lost everybody with that sorry. one. <laughs> he gets commissioned <sighs> to do really big, like I mean, they're they're little tiny pieces, but they they're big scenes, like Yetis, made out of weird things. And this is another one. This one is one of my favorites. It's called Derp. And I love this one because when I bought it, it made it it made me think of of like my old job because of just the derp the term of just uh people that you work with sometimes <laughs> anyway his name's david pound 20 heads.com awesome artist at deep lm if you go out to the festival and if i shoot footage i'll inevitably talk to him so anyway it's dork it's dorky but i like it you know if i was david pound i'd, I'd, st I'd start a web show or something called pound it out <laughs> cool guys it's pound it out dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Be well, and it's funny because he's he's a uh, he's his full time gig. He's a carpenter, and he just does like a few shows periodically. But it takes him so long to do the heads that he'll load up, and then he'll just do a couple of shows, sell out. I mean, he full on sells out, and then and then for the next, you know, for the whole year, he just does heads again. I mean, it's just it's crazy. I, I don't know. Yeah, and that's and that's and that's one thing too. Like if you start doing a pop up show, and 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 what. The word, word, you know, I want to, I can't talk. We want to do some more shows, like we're, um, like, like we, we cut our teeth on the, on the, on these festivals, which are really cool because we, we were going to them anyway. And we thought, well, why not bring our artwork and, and then it turned out to be a really good thing. But, um, um, it's a lot of fun. But I wanted to do some, some bigger shows and stuff. But, you know, if you're thinking about opening your own gallery or your own space and, or you're, or you're wanting to put your own art, art out there in a bigger way, doing a pop-up gallery like that, whether it's in a festival, whether it's in, a, in another business, whether it's somewhere like, you know, you're doing it in a cafe somewhere, but it's like your pop-up show. Um, there's a lot of ways you can do it to, to make it where, where it's more economically viable, I guess, you know, where you yeah. can make more money in it, where it's feasible, where, I know a lot of people will do things and they're like, oh, I have, you know, I, I sold a painting or sold a print and they're really happy and that's great. But if they got it a different way, you know, it might have been maybe yeah. more, I don't know, or, or, or maybe they did well financially, but like the, their name didn't get out there. I, I don't know. We, we do so much work with nonprofits and charities. And I've become very cognizant of how, 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 how your name is um, heard, I guess, about, yeah. you know, like you want. Like if you're working with a nonprofit or charity, like if you know you want to make sure everybody comes away from it in the very best light. You know you want everybody to hear about that charity, that nonprofit, the wonderful thing they do, and so it's an, and that just carries on. So if I'm working with a pop-up show somewhere, like if I'm working at a festival, um, 
a lot of times I'll end up talking to the media with them or something because, like, I, I don't know. I, I'm really good at being able to promote the show or promote the thing because I'm, I'm so used to working with charities. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? It's mm-hmm. just, it's weird. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's crazy how often that happens. But, you know, but that's one of the things, you know, if you want to get your art out there, work work with charities and nonprofits because it's not only a wonderful, awesome way to spend your time, but, you know. Well, Lisa chimed in and asked, do we sell um, work from online sources besides our website? You know, um, there is a gentleman who, who he, um, that it's supposed to be more, more, more like, like, like dog paintings and stuff, like, you know, of somebody one of their dogs. So he was wondering if, if, if I would, you would be a part of that. So I think you can go there and it's pretty much my website though. And then there was another gentleman who designed a website for me and which is really awesome. But it was, you know, it got it a little confusing because we have our website and then, and then, um, so really bramla.com, bramla.net, um, is the, is the place to go to. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so an accurate answer. <laughs> Oh, uh, was she, she wrote like Art Finder or something like that. So no, no, we don't, we don't use that. No, and uh, you know, and I should be on, um, I should probably be on, uh, you know, I think I have an account on like DeviantArt and some other places. Yeah, I, a, lot, a lot of people use DeviantArt. Yeah, because I, you know, and I have an account there, which I haven't touched in probably a year, year and a half, and I have an account on everything, really. I, I, I like, I have one on LinkedIn. And um, I went. I went and checked it, and I think I had like my my, my messages were like eighteen months old or something. I thought, oh man, sorry. And I wrote, I wrote everybody back, and in my Facebook page, apparently, I'm gonna have to turn the, the messages off because I thought I, I keep thinking I fix it, but I get I get the messages on my Facebook personal page, you know, on my John page, but on my art page, I I, I keep thinking they're being sent somewhere and they're not, and they have these really old messages and you know so then to the point where there's so many old ones that you know, oh my goodness gosh <laughs> you know it's it's got it's got a little a little crazy because i keep thinking they're being sent somewhere and i don't know hmm. yada yada it's all crazy so what's like the last bit of this painting that you got to finish up and then you call it done well okay here's the thing okay so i'm i'm working on the music this is the notes i, I hear as i'm as i'm listening to it it's also the experience, though. So, I want to add a little bit of green into it too. Down here, where um, it's harder to see, um, does it make it easier? Can you see the bottom? No. All right. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's a little more on the sides, so I want to work on that. And as this as this sets a little bit, I've got to wait for it to get about a medium sort of set, and then I can go in and feel the different colors because the different mediums that I put into it. If I let it dry about halfway, it's enough where I can touch it and it's not runny, but I can still feel the, the, the different medium. So they actually feel different. If I let it dry all the way, then I can't tell the difference. I, the paint's all dry the exact same. So the different viscosities, the different slicknesses and all that kind of go away. The matte and the, and, the, and the gloss are still there, but everything else is lost. So it's just sort of a waiting game. I got to wait for it to do that. And I'll post it online. So that we'll, we'll have it online and, um, you know, the picture as it gets there. But a little bit. So so I have this down. I'm going to rework it. I've got to put his hair back in a little more because, you know, I've had to cover it up. His jacket, his face I'm going to work on. Basically, i got to work on the whole painting. But the idea behind this, though, is using music as inspiration. So the first thing that I'm going to do when I start painting, when the live stream goes off, is turn on the music. So I can hear it because I have it in my head. I'm trying to I'm trying to have it go in my head, the Jimi Hendrix and all that. But because of copyright, I can't play it. Which ah, the Zug. So I wish I could play it. Yeah. It's so great. Um, so that's that's the first thing that's going to happen when the live stream goes off and I start painting on this again. And um, um, you know, be able to put the notes. But this base basic though, it, it basically this background is um. The notes, the feel, the vibe of the energy, and what I want to go in and do is put individual some some individual notes. Not so much that it's like a bouncing ball, you know, where where like you're 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 doing a sing along in school or something, you know, where, but just some individual notes that are that are hit by by the song in, in the Voodoo Child. So behind, I'm getting the overall feel that I feel that I want to go in and put some, I don't know, some exclamations, some marks of it that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, definitely. 
that'd be cool. So that's what, and also his face. I want to make his face a little different. So are you doing any of this to the other paintings, like the Bob Marley one? Or? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, less with the Bob Marley. The Bob, Bob Marley is mostly his face. So, and this one, um, I have Jimmy, and he he is like you know, and it's, it's the song Voodoo Child. So he is like the voodoo child. He is the guy that the magic is emanating from. So he, he has energy, his color, but it's it's around him. The music is around him. It's like the magic that he is you know, he's generating. So around him is going to be this crazy sort of color and stuff. Now in the Bob Marley painting that, that I'm going to work on, that I'm going to have done um, probably tomorrow, um, some point tomorrow, um, the background is going to stay pretty pretty plain. But his face, though, is going to be the where the, the the energy and the color is coming from. So for this, it's it's you know it's like the exact opposite. So Jimmy is cha channeling the voodoo child <laughs> sort of mojo through through his guitar, through his axe, and it's going to be swirling around him. It's like the magic is swirling. Um, Bob Bob Marley, I wanted to do a little bit different, where he has a you know wonderful energy, that same sort of artistry in the in this you know just just wonderful. I don't know. The music is just really, you know, it just grabs you, obviously. So, um, but uh, you know, but more from a heart sort of sort of spot. Not saying that Jimmy doesn't. I'm not saying that at all. It's just for this painting. So I've, I've done I've done another Bob Marley painting. So this painting, I wanted to be more of a like coming from the heart sort of. You know, you get that that, that reggae sort of feel, and it's just I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna stop dancing now. Well, uh, well, um, earlier in an earlier comment, Tony mentioned something about if you could paint. Um, it'd be cool if you could paint an animal next week. So oh, yeah. I, I know that with the the live stream coming from the Deep Ellum Arts Festival, it it, I mean, it's gonna be a free for all. We don't quite know what we're getting ourselves into at this point. Yeah, but, yeah, that's true. But it, but you do plan on painting, so do you have an idea of what you might paint? You know, while people are coming in, I mean, because usually at festivals you paint something that's a little easier so that you can paint while people are in or coming in and talking to you constantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. And by and by. And you do have Easier a dog show mean, that you have to fill. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have a dog show, so it might it might be a dog if it's an animal. Um, but I love painting dogs. But by easier, um, we really mean like more of a an emotional kind of piece. Because like if it's a piece that's, that it, if it's a technical sort of piece that's hard to work on um, at a live event. Because you know, like whenever people are coming up like at a show and yeah. stuff, because people come up and asking questions, you know and and if you're having to, you know, think like, oh my goodness, I can't move, you know, more, you know, if I move this a millimeter to the left, I'm going to run this painting. Um, you know, where if it's an, a music painting, an emotional painting, you can slather the paint on and you got the feeling. And then you can answer a question and get back and you're still in the zone. You can still, you know, get it done and you can do it and you haven't lost anything. You know, you haven't made somebody cross-eyed accidentally or, or chopped right. off a nose on a portrait or, you know, yeah. So you think, you're, are, you think you'll attempt some some um dog paintings i would love to i would love to yeah I, i'm actually working on some some paintings right now i've got i've got a painting of a pug i'm working on um where there's a hot dog on the table and the pug is like i really want that hot dog <laughs> so he's really excited about it um there's another painting of a woman walking a, a dog through a park and then another painting of a sunset with a with a woman and a dog um kind of watching the sunset and, and this is all for the griller gallery. yeah yeah it's all you know it's all well it, but it's for deep ellum well, yeah, true. Yeah. yeah, so it's for you know, but I love painting dogs, and I just finished. Oh, oh, hey, would you mind getting this painting? Yeah, it's a one that's going to um, Dubai. Well, Walgies, uh, the, the the African one. Yeah. And I'll show this. I know, I know, I know, I know that we have to go in just a minute, guys. But yeah. Um, okay, it's nine. We gotta go. Thank you. Here, let me get to that camera. Okay. So, so this is a, an animal one, and um, it's just from a gentleman. In Dubai, who was born in Kenya. Hold it up a little bit. There you go. Can you can you see the bird? Uh huh. Okay. It, it, thank you, sweetheart. It, it's a, it's an African savanna. Um, he said that from growing up there, he lives in Dubai now, but he grew up in Kenya, and it, it was it was the yellow weave, weaver bird that he remembers the most in their nest. So, I painted the nest and the weaver bird. It's a new nest. Usually they get they get brown and all all kind of cr crazy after a while, but it's a new one. There's a giraffe and then an elephant in the savanna with the acacia trees and whatnot. So, um, so I love working on animals. Um, next week, though, 
Yeah, yeah, I'll try to. If you know, you know what'd be cool if if Deep Ellum is a little nutty, and if we're not able to like the streaming isn't working. There, I mean, what we're gonna have to see. It's gonna be interesting, but it should be cool. It's gonna be a live festival. It's a music festival with art and all this. So, so there could be some 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 crazy characters. We don't even know. We don't even know what it's gonna be like. So, but but we're gonna stream it. We'll you know we'll find out. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So guys, I'm gonna work on this pad. No, it's nine o'clock. We gotta go. Um, I want to thank you so much for coming and chatting with us. And I'm going to work on this painting some more. I just wanted to give you an idea of what I do. So this, I, I, I did the background of the overall feel. Now I'm going to let it dry a little bit. And, and so in an hour or so, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to start, I'm going to start tidying it up and putting some more notes in and making the, the, the it gel a little bit. So I think whenever you see the finished piece, you'll be able to look at this and what we did tonight and be able to say like, oh yeah, I, I, I see what you did. <laughs> and if not, come back and let me know <laughs> on the live feed. Yeah, we'll post, you'll post a picture of it pretty quick. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This, this painting should be done by Monday. This one, I should have some more that are done as well. Cool. But thanks so much for watching, guys. I appreciate it. And the chat is always so much fun. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for talking with us. Yeah. See you next week. Yeah. Cool. <laughs>